gospel, light of the temple. Saw a swing, kill a lot from the ghetto. The hood messenger, let him know hell's close. Black burial, the devil in a black cloak. Yo, what is up? Welcome to the Street Gospel Podcast. I'm your host, Dave One, and this is episode number... Yo, Cam, what episode is this? 84, episode number 84. If you checked out episode number 83, we had a uh, uh, good, hot, up-and-coming hip-hop rapper from the IE, Kiaja, came through. Uh, I just seen recently, she's like blowing up now. You saw that, Cam? She came out on a couple videos, dropping a couple new songs. So uh, definitely was a good podcast. Uh, if you haven't checked out that one, uh, she's she's definitely a cool cool person. Uh, glad she came through. Uh, she, Cam, I just really realized that that was our youngest guest that we ever had. So that was cool, man. We're trying to get like a younger crowd. Maybe, maybe today we're a little bit older though. You know, <laughs> but uh, nah, not really, not really. Let's see. Young, so, so, young, at, so, young so at heart. I've been waiting to get this guy for a minute. So uh, he was supposed to be on some early in the early shows. And uh, it just yep. it didn't work out. He had, he had a plate his plate full, but uh, you know, hard I, to get. Yeah, I like to play a little bit of <laughs> a little music for this guy right here. So this guy right here is um, he represents his hometown, Pomona, oh. to the fullest. I mean, he's a, uh, a husband, a father. Uh, he he uh, does this old dog breeding thing. We'll talk. Oh, about, and he was he's been doing it long before <laughs> all these others jump on the bandwagon. He's a businessman. Uh, uh, he's a tattoo artist. You call, I mean, he's a tattoo artist, but he's he's also an artist. So th- we'll, we'll get into that. There's there's a, there's a difference there, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, a little bit of a difference. Yeah, big difference. We'll get into that. But I want you to welcome... Uh, he, oh, he has his own shop in the city of Upland, Three Foot Radius. Yeah, three Definitely foot radius one of the dopest shops around. Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. I want you to give it up for the one, the only, Mr. A.B. Alvarez. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. What's up, brother? Ah, uh, man. Just enjoying it. Trying to enjoy it. You know what I mean? Th- thanks for covering out some time it. for me, bro. Oh, man. Hey, thank you, bro. Thank you for doing it on a Wednesday. Busy, busy guy. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But I was you like, know? what day? Yeah. I was like, we had to flip the whole schedule here. I know. My bad. But uh, it's, it's, just... all, it's all good. I, I, I don't mind doing that for... Uh, for friends and and for good guests, and you know what? Before it was like Sunday was the 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 day I just stay home, me and my wife and my kids. We stay home and we just chill out and you yeah, know do yeah. whatever. But now that I, I'm a golfer too, you forgot you forgot, bro. I forgot to do you that. Know? My bad. I should have known that. <laughs> I'm becoming golfer, but anyways, uh, so I mean, now it, Sundays is is golf. You you have a hard time getting the ball through the windmill. Because every time when I'm over there, <laughs> the, the, it just, nah, it just or the crocodile always like I hit slams. it in the water all the time. <laughs> are you? Are you? Balls. How good are you, bro? <laughs> uh, uh, you know what? I mean, for the time that I've been playing, I'm pretty good. Not to be like that, but there's always room for for improvement. Um, it's just really, it's really cool going out there, man. Okay, let me ask you this though. Okay, so so to me, I play golf a little bit. Okay, a few times with office people, you know what I mean? <laughs> playing playing a little golf with it, trying to trying to fit in. Yeah. Right? Okay, so I know from because we've been friends for a while that you you are an athlete. Yeah. Okay. I was. But, I used oh, to you, be. You used to be an athlete. We'll talk about that. Yeah. But do you have to be athletic? Yes. To play golf, or do you have to just put in the work? See, because to me, it seems like golf is you, if you practice more and put in the time, you can be good, even though you're not very athletic. Tiger Woods is a total different monster. Uh, yeah, you're, you're, uh, it just, to, I, I guess you're both qualifies and is, it, it can work both ways. You know what I mean? I think that depending on your work ethic, you know, right. we can all learn anything. You know what I mean? I mean, I've taught people to tattoo, and they weren't artists. That's a trip. So if they put the the work and the time, you'll be able to get anything. Like they say, what is it? Uh, you become a master of something after 10 years of putting eight hours a day into right. it. Right. So you become a master of that. You know what I mean? If you're an athlete, and you're athletic, and you get into a sport, you might pick it up faster. You know what I mean? Okay. Everything clicks a lot faster. Uh 
moves in certain ways. You like, in, let's say for golf, I played baseball, so a swing. Um, in baseball, they used to tell you, you're, you know, don't golf swing, right? Right. And now you're like, don't baseball swing. <laughs> yeah, don't baseball swing. You know what I mean? And it's like, uh, but it, it's it's the hardest part is uh, not, you know, I can't twist and turn like I used to when I was young. Yeah, you know I, mean, I mean, you just things don't work the same, bro. Yeah, you know I what I mean? mean? They, it looks like it feels like they do, but you it, want them to. But oh, they, dude, you should see me the next day. I'm sore as hell. So you, and you're committed because I see you playing at uh, some fa- some fancy golf courses, man. You know what, the Trump, what, right? No, what is no, it? I, you know what? I haven't played there. But I thought I, you did. I played Pelican. Pelican is pretty expensive. Yeah, that's well. Yeah, 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 it's 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 a nice place. Uh, Monarch. We've played all the courses locally. I'll see what I can do with Trump, man. I'll, I'll give him a call. Try to get you and Calm in there. You know what I mean? Trump 2024, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. I'm I'm I was for him 2020. You know, you know, you know, the, you know, the, you know, the funny story. <laughs> we have a funny story about that, right? But, Me and you. Well, yeah, dude, man. Okay. Are, so this is going to, this is going to turn off a lot of people, but, oh, but, but, but I think, I think times have changed and I'll, and we'll talk about this. We'll, we'll just jump into it real quick. I remember when, when I was at the tattoo shop, <laughs> <laughs> you called dude. So we're at the tattoo shop and everybody's, this was, in, <laughs> this is in 2016 when the, when the politics yeah. was hot, yep. right? When the politics were hot. And 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 you were tattooing somebody. I went to visit. I'm talking, and the and it's packed. Right? Yeah. And so you you hit me up, and you're like, "Hey, hey, who are you voting for?" <laughs> I remember. In front of everybody, yep. right? And everybody stood. Everybody just stopped talking and looked at me. And I said, "I said I'm gonna vote for Trump." <laughs> and I and, and then you. The good thing is, you were like, you shook your head, and you asked me why. And and it, it wasn't. I think I think now and and even then, it's not about a person. It's about what some policies, right, and what they yeah. stand for. I mean, it also it was one of those things that, uh, you know, you put your head down and you work for years. You know, you don't look up, you don't realize politics are going on, you don't realize uh, that the world's still revolving around. You know, your your goal in life is your family, your bills, uh, move forward. Get your kids going. Get them. Get them out ahead. You know what I mean. Then you start looking up. That starts taking a little, not a back seat, but it, it's a comfortable ride now. So now you can enjoy looking at the scenery. So you start seeing politics and how that's affecting your business and how it's affecting life. And uh, you know, I only ask people that. Uh, you know, we go we go way back, Dave. So you know, like I respect you a lot and what you stand for. I, I know you very well. So. You know, you you seen I put you on blast in front of everybody on purpose. You know what I mean? Because you got you got people. You know, it's a tattoo shop's like a barber shop. Everybody's got something to say. Everybody's yeah. got a different Opinion. idea. Yeah, bro. Yeah. So you know that conversation was hot at the time, bro. It's, it's like this right here, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's it's it's, it's, it's a live, hot seat. Yeah, it's a live thing going on every day. You know what I mean? And and just stirring the pot, you know, is pretty cool. Because then you know yeah. you left whatever. Um, but for me, I take it because I respect your thoughts and your views. Right. So as everyone else might be just like, oh, that dude, whatever, everybody's got their own view. No, yeah. I'm also taking it in as as a view and information. You know what I mean? I, I, and I think that's what, you know, you mentioned barbershop. Your family was had owned barbershop, cut, cut hair, and then in, in the tattoo shop. The, the atmosphere is the same. Yeah. You know what I mean? You go there, you chat it up. You talk about things, you shake hands, you leave. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's cool. We're not we're not outside fighting, and yeah. and, and it's it, it's funny because I, I went over there what maybe a couple months ago, stopped by, and we politics came up <laughs> right again. So uh, so this time there's two older. I shouldn't say older because I'm older now too, right? But there's some veteranos old, that were bro. that were that were sitting there right yeah. next to you watching you tattoo. Com had a younger dude; he was tattooing, and that dude started jabbering about about <laughs> trump is this racist da, 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 da. right but the funny thing is that the two older homeboys that were there right they probably were a little bit older than me uh not by much but they <laughs> they were like nodding their head me and you started talking about just policy stuff yeah and i think i think that's what the i think that's what's kind of shifted a little bit because like you said you the the, the world starts passing you by and you're not paying attention to politics, yeah. and then you start paying attention when they, when politics comes knocking on your door. Right? Yeah, when it's, when you realize it's going to affect you, you right. know. Uh, I think also when you're young, 
it doesn't matter. You know, you have a long, you know, a long road in front of you. If there was a timeline from birth to death in, in your life, you know, you could actually pinpoint where you're at right now. You know what I mean? And you're going to realize that, you know, we're closer to death. Right. Than we are. <laughs> I mean, Unfortunately, it's true. Yeah, yeah, you know, and, and you start viewing things a whole different way. You know what I mean? You start thinking about the, you know, what am I leaving my kids? Right. You know? Right. Are, are they passing new policies that everything I worked hard for is going to affect my kids? Right. And what I worked around to leave for them or whatever I built or whatever it may be, you know what I mean? A business, a home. Uh, finances, security, whatever, you know, right. cars, assets, and it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Um, so you start paying a little bit more attention. You know, my, all my kids, they were all Biden supporters, you know? So at home we were arguing, you know, it was, it was, it was a trip at my sister's house. Everybody was already, Oh, I can't believe you're going for Trump races, all this, you know? And it's <laughs> like, you know, I even, they were even telling me like, Oh, dad thinks he's white. And you know, dad oh, wants man. to be white Here we go. and this and that, you know? And it's right. like, Hey, you know, the the only thing is, like, I made the most money during the time Trump was in office. Yeah. So, I, and not that, you know what I'm saying? And, and I'm sorry, but we all live a more comfortable life with money. I think there's, so, there's a few things that people like, right? I, I mean, they like more money in their pocket. I mean, they you like know? They like security, yeah. right? And they like to be left alone. Just leave me alone. I don't want to. I don't want to have to worry about a new policy. You know what I mean? Uh, right. Stupid stuff too. No, I want to be on my couch. No more. No more black bags at the swap meet. Oh, yep. no more plastic straws. It's like every every yeah. week. It's like something stupid. Like how is this? Like this is affecting me in a, in a small way, but then you're like the 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 like the noose is tightening with every little thing that they're trying to do. And then I tell people that like like you realize like like Hispanic culture, right? Family, God, leave me alone. I just want to make a living and and be successful. And work hard. And work hard, right? right? That's all I want to do. That's like conservative values. And I tell people that all the time. Like, it's in our nature. It's in our culture. That's that's how we were raised. Work hard. You'll be successful. Be happy. Love your family. Go to church. You're good. Yeah. Leave me alone. Yeah. And I'll pay my bills. And pay my bills. And pay my bills. Like Right? But then it's, when, it's funny though because it's like that's like a big thing for Mexicans. Pay your bills, pay your bills, pay your bills. You know what I mean? Be pay on time. Bills. Be on yeah. time. And then you got other cultures that are like, you know, don't pay your bills. Yeah, F the bills, you know. <laughs> we'll just charge them all up and let that credit card run out. Charge them. I mean, which isn't a bad. I mean, not like that, but whatever works for for different I, I, systems. I think, you know what I, I think mean? It, I think the culture is. Has has been, you know, if you don't have it, don't buy it. If you exactly. don't have the money to buy it, if you can't exactly. afford it, don't buy it. That's that's the way I always bought vehicles. You know, you you, yeah. you, you go in, you do your credit, and they say, oh, you 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 qualify qualify <laughs> yeah. for this. You that doesn't this mean, car. That doesn't mean you could afford that. Yeah, yeah. I go in with a with a payment in my head and say, okay, I, this is what I can afford. Yeah, this is. How I, I want could. this car, but if it if if I can afford it, <laughs> give me the I, Lambo. Then I can't get it, right? Yeah, you know, give me the Lambo. Give me the it's Lambo. It's funny. I, I got a, 184 months. Yeah, I got a, a couple of friends. They all own Lambos, right? And it's funny because growing up, you're like, oh, everybody wishes they had a Lambo, right? Now you know people who have Lambos, they don't even drive the damn car, right? Because the streets are gonna mess it up yeah. every time they drive it. It's gonna tear it up it's it's funny it's, the maintenance you know, is crazy yeah but it's a good asset for them right you know they right. have you know they have an asset and they can always dump that off or you know you, you know one thing i liked about you bro is that you've always been uh honest oh yeah, yeah. Or, I, I, could say, try to. I, I could say <laughs> i could say brutally honest well i mean some people would say to a fault yeah some people don't like it right you know what i mean some, I, I, I like it because you're gonna be flat out you know, I've come to you. There's been people that have asked to be on this show, and I and I and I, or like, <laughs> and, and I've come to you and said, "Hey, do you know this guy?" Yeah, yeah, I don't have him, Dave. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I appreciate all that. the people that were denied are like thinking about no, no, me no. right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I, but I've thought like you know I've there's been times where you, yeah. you you've been like honest, but I I appreciate the honesty. Some well, people I mean, don't appreciate that. You know, it, it's. Well, we're living in a fake world, bro. Yeah. 
you know we're living in a world where people like us are we're gonna be dinosaurs i mean unfortunately you faster than me oh, but you, know, this guy. <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean we're gonna be fossils but anyways but but yeah it's, that's what i'm saying like the phone you know we're talking about a phone yeah there. dude I was doing the math, right? And I'm like, okay, you know, every now and then I go on there and see how much time I'm spending on the damn phone. So was, I, I'm at, I'm down. Actually, I'm down to an hour and 25 minutes a day, right? That, that's probably a lot better than most people. Dude, I used to be at about two hours, two and a half, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and so uh, I've been watching that. But this world, I mean, dude. Someone's selling you something. Someone's telling you what to do. Obviously, I'm on Instagram. You know what I mean? Social media. Right. Um, they're telling you life. Co- oh, we're talking about life coaching and stuff like that. You know, right. about uh, uh, Wes Watson and how, <laughs> dude. Yeah. So I've no. I knew him from before. He was yeah the millionaire the that coach. Yeah, yeah, dude. Right. And it's like you've got that going on. You've got. Now in my industry, you've got tutorials and right. people who have been tattooing five years are now master teachers. You know, you've got this, you've got that, and then and and everybody's the best at what they do nowadays. On, yeah, on, on the ground. But if you tell that person, like, dude, you don't know how many times I I type and text people and and message people like like, bro, who are you? Yeah, like, what makes you a master? You right. know, what makes you this? Why are you telling, you know what I mean? And then at the end, I just delete it, you know, because no one wants, no one wants to hear that. Right. Nobody wants to hear the truth because now I'm the hater. I'm the bad guy. I'm, I'm, I'm the person that, but you know what? We all come from a, from a time. If you wanted to be known as something, you had to be out there doing it. You know what I mean? You had to either put in the work. You had to be in the street. If you want to be known as, as a, as a, you know, if you were, you know, I was in the streets a lot. So if you want to be known as that guy, hey, well, you had to go be that guy. Right. And you needed witnesses. You, you couldn't be on the gram saying, yeah, you're that guy. I'm that telling guy. Telling stories. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm that guy. Or, well, you could, cause then you come out and you flash your little strap yeah. and you know, you've got some little. Tell stories that nobody could uh, verify. Yeah. And you got your little you know, sack and this and that, you know, you rented your gold chain and did whatever you got to do. All your deals car. Ah, oh, dude. Yeah. Everybody's parked outside, you know, ah, oh, dude. But yeah, that it's just a different, a different era where you had to prove time. yourself. Yeah. It's, right? it's, 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 so we come from that. And you know, what's funny about that. That era is not that far, long ago. You know what? It's crazy. If you think about that, when I first got my, I, I, I had a memory pop up when I first got my tattoo from you, uh, it's like 2010. It's 13. And, yeah. 13, 14 so 13, years now. 13, 14 years. And that's when, fi- you know, Facebook and stuff started coming out. Yeah. So, but it's almost like, what is it? 20 years is one generation. It's like one generation was raised Boy. on social media right now. I know. Pretty much. Hey, but, you, but you know what? It's funny because I talk to my kids. I'm sure you talk to Camel, right? Yeah. I mean. Camel's once in a, once in a while, looks like he's playing a video game, <laughs> but uh, he's probably texting his girl. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> hey, but uh, uh, like my kids, you know, at, at one point I'd always be like, "Why are you on your phone? Get off of social media!" And they're like, "Dude, we're not on social media. They're on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, they're on video games. They're on other stuff than social right. media." So there's a, there's there is a generation that's hip to to the knowledge of social media. You right, know what I mean? As, right. as far as saying like... There's some positive stuff in there. Or as far as knowing like, oh, that's, it's it's BS. Yeah. You know? Um, I think it's more our older generations that are really stuck on it. Like, oh, it's new. Look. Yeah. You know, I could see somebody. I could yeah. do all this. It's just part of their life. Yeah. that's For us, it's like, oh, this is... We didn't have that, right? We didn't have... I mean, we came from an era of, oh, you got cable? <laughs> right somebody oh. said what's a telegram the other day i worked oh, and they were yeah. like hey what's a telegram and i was like dude you don't know and i'm like it's like morse code bro and i'm like thinking like they're just looking at me and i'm thinking like dang i don't know what's worse wire I, money yeah that i said it and i knew <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know right? I mean? but it's it is a culture we, we we've come from cable tv yeah the, the computers the internet crazy huh phones i mean we we lived in an era that was not 
We're uh, supposed to be living on the moon right now, remember? Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> flying cars, too. <laughs> yeah, flying yeah, cars. Flying cars, you know? It's, I, it's, 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 you know, life's crazy, bro. Like, um, I think our generation was was the last of of we're the last of hard workers we're the last of making things like like real i can't i don't want to knock other people that work hard right now and that that have those same values yeah and, and i don't want to discredit anybody like that because there's still some people out there that 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 were taught that and have that instilled in them but it's a very few you know what i mean it was like like i remember taking my telling my kid hey man let's go do the yard let's work you know this and that come on we gotta knock it out and then i'll be like look right here you're gonna take out all the weeds you know and then he'll be like okay and i'll be like meanwhile i'm gonna go over here and handle this and then we're gonna be done you know what he, you know i'd come back and he's sitting right there indian style pulling out like one weed you know and i'm thinking like dude we're supposed to he just looks at me like why? Do you think we created that though? Hell yeah. As parents, it's our fault, man. Right? That was the dilemma, though. It is right? our fault because because you come from not a lot. You know, I, we, my dad had a steady steady job. We we never went without. We had a nice little house in in Cudahy, in Bell. Right? We lived there, but I I think when there was times when my dad would be like, "Here's thirty bucks for your shoes. If you want those ones, you have to you have you to get, make up. You have to get the rest." Which oh, I was yeah. like, okay, well, I'm gonna go do this yard over here, or I'll hit up my uncle and see if I can, you know, pull Figure pull weeds at his house or wash this car. I'll tell the neighbor I'll wash their car, five, or you get all the change, bucks. right? Start finding change and start doing you, what you, you do. wait till your birthday comes and you get birthday money and put it all together, <laughs> right? So I yep. think it was. So then we get older, and then our kids and we're like, you know, I remember my dad. I, I bought my little daughter Ash, you know, some some little Penny Hardaways, right? She was little. My dad goes, why'd you do that? And I said, what do you mean? And he goes, now you're always going to have to buy her those. Huh. And I said, oh. And I said, well, dad, if I have it, I'm going to do it. You know what I mean? And <laughs> probably wasn't the smartest <laughs> hey, thing, was, right? You know, but it's funny how you still remember that conversation. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like that conversation. Because every time you bought shoes, you thought of that conversation. Right. You know what I mean? It was like, oh, here I go again. Buy these. <laughs> Fuck, I fucked up. You know, like, I should have bought the pay But you want to give your kids hey, but they more. Don't, they don't even have pay less no more. I know. You got Skechers. No more pro wings. Got to get the Skechers, bro. <laughs> uh, but we created that. I, hey, I had some Skecher, uh golf shoes, dude. No, you didn't. Yeah, I had to buy them real quick because I forgot them at home, and that's all you had at the at the pro shop. Wow. They were really comfortable, bro. Now you know you're getting old. If you like Skechers, well, no, they're for old to, people. I, I had to buy them. They're for, the, Skechers are for old people, dude. So if well, you like them, that means you're like you're up there. And those are new. I wear New Balance a lot. You do? That's your, those that's are your old choice. People. Those are old uh, new people. New Balance has a little style to it, though. That's what I was telling my kids. You know? I said they're going to make a comeback because uh, I was wearing them a while back. I think Cam has a couple pair of New Balance. I got a pair. Hey, they're dope, huh? The five six, the five sixties. They still uh, look nice. I don't There's know some, what some number. Levi's. I yeah. got you, bro. Yeah, I just you know whatever, whichever look good. Homes, I don't even trip no more. So, so for yeah. those that stuck through the Trump deal we just oh, talked yeah. about right now, <laughs> they're, they're still uh, they're still hanging with us, right? From t- Trump to shoes, Trump to shoes to to, <laughs> yeah. to golf. But where'd you grow up, man? I, I mentioned it earlier. I, I grew up in Pomona. Now, Pomona, Pomona California. It, it, it's not the. Uh, the most ideal place, right? Oh, well, it was ideal for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what I tell Ralph? Ralph, uh, Ralph shout out to Ralph out there, our core graphics, yeah, our boy, right? Ralph. That's who, he's the one that introduced us. You know us. what, man? Yeah, I love Ralph, man. I love Ralph. I always tell Ralph that Pomona, this, this is the problem with Pomona. This is why it's dangerous in Pomona. <laughs> Tomo, Pomona is a dark city. If you think about it, at night, Pomona is very dark compared to other cities. Like, like your shop. Like up lit here. up, you mean? Yeah. Like light, like electricity? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not saying like, it might have some spiritual darkness <laughs> over it, but. From the north side. It ain't in get, the south side, I'll tell you that much. You gotta get the podcast shot uh, up here. What's it called? But, My it, bad. but, but there's, a, there's a lot of trees. There's a lot of trees, and then they cover the lighting. And then I, 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 yeah. I remember, I remember I went to, uh, I went to Fred's house. Right, and I'm driving down there, and I'm like, it's dark over here. Downtown, right? you're going downtown. I'm going downtown. I'm yeah. like, it's dark over here. But then I'm, I'm, my, my wife lived in Pomona for like five years. East End side, it was dark over there. So East I'm like, End in what? Right after uh, 60. 
He's standing in, was it Reservoir? Oh, no way. In the back. Back down there? Yeah. Way? By the, Chino, borderline Chino? Or, uh, on the north of the 60. I, I know where you're behind talking Behind that, like more behind the neighborhood, behind the Arco right there. I know where you're talking about. Yeah, so she lived over there for a little bit. Uh, and then she lived in, off of uh, San Antonio. For, and, and it was dark there, too. And I was like, man, this is... You know what? Now that you, that you talk about her, yeah. It's dark. But all the intersections are lit up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, Does she hold? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. I haven't. You know what? I haven't. I don't go to Pomona no more. But what was it like when you were growing up in Pomona? I mean, it was cool. I, you know, you, when you don't know other, it's cool. So you're you know what I'm saying? Right? Yeah, it's, it's it is what it is. You know, but I remember um, we used to live when I was real little. We used to live off of Phillips and and Town, right? So trip out. I used to live down the street from from Ralph, you know, not not knowing. He knew my brother, and uh, and my sister. I didn't know him at the time, right? And then uh, a couple other homies later on. Now that now I know they used to live right around the corner. But anyway, we ended up moving. But uh, from there, we used to walk across the street through some apartments, and we'd go to the plunge. Right there at Washington Park, you know, and everybody, you know, it's funny because you talk to other people. And they're like, yeah, we used to go to the plant. And you're like, damn, I didn't even know you back then. That's crazy, stuff. yeah. Yeah, bro, it's how, how people's lives were probably, you know, you bump into them or You just whatever. had your little block. You hang out with your friends. Yeah. And then, yeah. And then, uh, you know, growing up, it was, you know, Pomona was cool. I mean, there was a lot of gang activity. Um, but when you're young, you didn't see it. You know, I, I at the barbershop, I used to see it. You, you'd you have... Uh, like old gangsters going in there because i used to shine shoes from the age of like five and on i shine shoes and i used to uh, sweep the hair on sundays and my brother did saturdays you know and that's where i got my like 10 bucks 10 bucks a day plus whatever i made on shoe shines and shit Boom. yeah and you know, bola? you have to ask somebody <laughs> bola? you want to shine your shoes and it's like dude nobody was wearing you know what i mean it's right like, that generation was leaving wearing dress shoes all the time yeah. So it wasn't like a big market for me at that time. But anyways, yeah. um, you would see like like gangsters, you know, like. And it's funny because this is like early 80s, right? When I'm like five, six years old and I'm watching like real gangsters looking dudes like they sit down and, you know, they cross their leg, they cross their hands, and they sit there, they got their logs. And they're just chilling with their, you know, they're combing their brocha, getting ready to get a haircut. You know what I mean? Keeping it short with with the barbers. But, you know, you look and you're like, damn, that's a fucking gangster ass <laughs> fool right there. You know what I mean? Like, damn. And so so that era and, and they're coming out of the 70s. You know what right, I'm saying? Right. And, and it's it's a trip because now you, you go on social media. And you see people that. They dress. They like, dress up like that. Yeah. And it's like, wow. Yeah. Like, bro. Like, almost like a, like like it's a costume. Yes. And it's like. And to those guys, it was a lifestyle. Bro, and that, that's a trip because you you start thinking like, dude, like, are you, you don't even, you can't even fathom the thought of that, what, what was going on at the time that people were dressing like that. Right. You know what I mean? You can't even fathom that. Right. You, that, that thought, it, like. Bro, you're 22. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, and yeah. it's like, like, dude, like, oh, it, it was a trip. I remember one guy one time came in there and he's sitting there, right, and some fools pulled up and uh, they get off and they look and they see him and he said something to him and that dude panicked out, bro. He panicked out, sick, right? So he gets up and he asks my dad, "Hey, is there a back door and this and that?" Meanwhile, you see a car and then a couple homies they're getting down off their car right so uh, I, i'm just I, dude i'm a little ass kid i'm just sitting there just spectating all this shit right and uh so he's just panicked tells his girl this and that girl goes out i don't know what happened but he ran out of there bro and you see the other guys in the car two of them run and then the car pulls out you know i don't know what happened to the dude but i mean so you're seeing all this stuff going on that was it's going yeah. on around are you attracted to that life you, you know what i didn't even know like you know, they're gangsters, but at that at that, I mean, my dad's. You know, we're we're paisas. We we come from Mexico, bro. My dad, I'm first generation here. You know what I mean? Um, so you're you're seeing that, and you're just like, wow. You know, you probably know he's gonna get his ass beat over there, or right? Whatever, or who knows? Yeah, I didn't think he'd. 
they'd kill him. You know what I mean? That wasn't a thought. You know what I mean? Yeah. Later on in, in, in the 90s, then you started when, uh, you know, it was on. There was a lot of stuff going on, you know. Are um, you getting – I know you played sports. I know you had a, a tight family. Uh, yeah. So how do you? How does a guy like you get, start diverting Just, from that? Uh, you know what, man? See, your family had a barbershop. <laughs> We had mom a, and dad. Yeah. You, have, you have a brother that's looking out for you. They, they, they're not just, involved in that lifestyle, and you start kind of swaying. Yeah, huh? um, you seem I don't, I don't you know, seem man. too smart for that. You know what, man? Uh, and and not that 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 those people aren't smart. You know, because dude, it's just I don't I don't know, man. I I, I was talking to Brian, and I told him growing up, I wanted to be a con artist. You know, like okay, so that what, was that was my thing. Like, well, where does well, that come I into? To be a baseball player, obviously, you know, playing ball. But uh, I, I don't, I don't know, dude. Just so it's just in your mind from from when you're. I, 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 I can't say that. Just... I think freedom allowed it. Uh, my dad and my mom they separated when I was about fourteen, fifteen. Uh, my mom, you know, she had to start working. Uh, my dad was an alcoholic. Uh, so then I got away with more things. You know what I mean? I wasn't so much coming home, being scared of, of a father figure or saying, Oh shit, I better get home. My dad's going to whoop my ass. You know what I mean? I remember hanging out with, with homies and friends and they would be, we'd be in their front yard and they'd be like, Oh shit, my dad's going to come. Hey, fool. Hey, hey, you guys got to. Go out of the other house. You know, go stand over there across the street. You know, there we go. It's 15 of us standing across the street, you know. <laughs> and it's like, oh, here we are. Yeah, the dad and then my homie's dad would roll up, and he'd just mad dog everybody, you know. But uh, he was cool, Trunks. You know, uh, it was it was funny, dude. And then that guy would come home, and we'd move over to another house, you know. I, I think that's all we were freedom, doing. But, like you said. But that's what it is, you know. you, you Nobody, nobody supervising. Yeah, and and – and not that my mom didn't because, you know, my mom was very strict and uh, she's very nice, very nice, too. Um, you know, you love your child, man. Yeah. You know, love love for your child. Love. What do they say? Love is blind a little bit. There's only so much you can do sometimes. Yeah. And then you're going to you're sometimes you're not going to believe that your kids, you know, a bad kid. My mom used to tell all, all the all she used to tell me, be careful who you hang out with. You know, be careful who you hang out with. Be careful who you hang out with. They're bad. They're bad. You know, towards the end, she'd people would roll up to the barbershop and she'd be like telling them, hey, be careful who you hang out with. You know, <laughs> don't hang out with Abe. Don't hang out with him. You know, and it was like, and I'd laugh. we'd all laugh. You know what I mean? But a lot of, uh, man, the whole South Side, they all, uh, they know my mom, you know. Everybody knows my mom down there. She cut hair. She cut everybody's hair. Um you know, I got into uh, stealing cars. And I started smoking weed. Uh, How old were you when I started smoking weed? When you started stealing cars and smoking weed. Getting uh, you know what? I started smoke, uh, stealing cars a little later. I started smoking weed about I was like f- fifteen. You know, uh, and then uh, man, the gateway. Yeah, the gateway drug, and it's true. Yeah, I, I believe it. I think yeah, so. I, I, I think did so it at too. The like, time. like if you're, if everybody's honest. Yeah, let's be real. You know what I mean? Let's keep it one hundred on that one. You're honest on you know? that. Yeah, right? you, unfortunately, this is what I like about you because most people will be like, "No." Yeah, there's a lie, but it, bro. But it's true, right? I mean, I, it, it may not. It may you you may not walk all the way through the gate through the yard and everything, but the but the gates open once you start. I mean, so here, I told my kids. This is what I told my kids, my daughter, because my daughter likes to. Well, you know, yeah, that sucks. But anyway, <laughs> you know, she likes to smoke weed here and there. She's okay. not a big old pothead, right? Okay. So I told her, look, there's a meth head, right? Sucks a fucking tweaker. He smokes weed, right? Right. A cokehead smokes weed. A crackhead smokes weed. A pothead smokes weed. Alcoholic smokes weed. Heroin addicts smoke weed, right? So all these, all these different drug users have that one drug in common it's right crazy. so this circle of passing the weed brings all these people together you know 
So now I might, let's just say, let's just say, hey, Dave, you like heroin, right? Hey, man, I, I smoke weed, right? Hey, but you know what? Dave's cool as fuck. So now, hey, let's hang out. We'll catch some weed. But you know what? Hey, Dave's fucking slamming over here on the side. Hey, what are you doing, Dave? Oh, fool, you know? But now Dave can lure me in and get some more dope if I'm, you know what I mean? So now me and him are doing it. It's you crazy. Know? Yeah, bro. That, Good and, point. And I mean, I mean, dude, I mean, I dabbled in, in, in uh, unfortunately, you know what I mean? I've kept a lot of things from my kids uh, my whole life. Um, because I never wanted my kids to say you did it, you know what I mean? And, uh, uh, you know, I've never really told my kids like all the, uh, the extremity of what I did in my past. Right. You know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, dude, I did. Is there, is there a reason why you never told your kids? Yeah, I'm embarrassed, bro. It's obviously not See, something to be, in, be proud of. So, you know, I, you know, I, I, this is what I like about you, man. My, my dad would say the same thing. Yeah. He said he he said it, it was embarrassing. He said he wasted years in an, in in the neighborhood. He he loved his neighborhood. Oh yeah, he loved his friends that he made lifelong friends. But he said he wasted time. He was I wasted time, and, and 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 eventually, you know, because of the time he spent in the neighborhood, that's 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 how he died. You know, we talk about yeah. You know, I share that with you is because he says oh, we talk about tattoos, right? The old school way of tattooing was. Hey, come on over. We're <laughs> having a tattoo <laughs> party in the garage. Yes. You know, everybody. And so those old guys have see all these diseases. Yeah. I mean, he it wasn't was, even trip. It was dormant in his system. But yeah. he, if he goes back and says, what was the root of that? The root of that was is like from the neighborhood. Like, yeah. like he, he, and he would always say like, I, I'm embarrassed because I feel like I wasted time. Like, like, man, that I, I could have done better. You know what I mean? Instead well, of getting caught up. I, I, I think more, uh, and in the process of done better is I think it's more, I could have gave more mm. and meaning you, you have siblings or, you know what I'm saying? Your, right. your, your family. Yeah. You know, and, and, uh, some regrets. Well, yeah, man, I have a gang of regrets, bro. I wasted from, from the time I was 15 till I was like, till I was 20 something, bro. I don't even know, bro. 27 maybe. Yeah. You know, I've got uh, 27, 40. Yeah. Um, this month in February, I hit 20 years sober. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Right. I, I was talking to a homie of mine, Casper. Uh, rest in peace. Uh, he passed away. Good homie. You know, I, he used to pick me up from the barbershop with his little Z and his tall can, and we'd go to the hood. But anyways, <laughs> uh, when they were talking... And, uh, you know, he's he was doing good. And uh, I, I told him, man, if we're talking about old times and being high and loaded. And I told him, dude, what were we thinking? And he's just straight out said, well, we weren't. You know, and it's, it's, it's a trip because maybe it's that age that you don't think your mind isn't comprehending. Or is mature enough to understand that? Because I have a hard time talking to, like, like even every, everything we're talking about, you know, getting through to my kids, you right. know, is, right. is really hard for me. And uh, making them understand, you know what I mean? Because uh, I don't know. I don't know how they really view me. You know what I mean? I know they love me. Uh, they better love me. You know what I mean? But I don't understand if, if they if they view me a certain way or what well, dad does tattoos, you know, not every dad right. has that type of profession. You know right. what I mean? Most, most, most parents nine to five, uh, whether it's their own business or, or, or they work for a company or whatever, whatever this, whatever it may be, you know what I mean? They, it's a different type of structure, you know what I mean? But when I think with tattoos, it's like, it's like a stereotype. Yeah. I and even, so even the yeah. kids are, you know, they see a stereotype in it. And what people say, oh, your dad's a tattoo artist. That's cool. Or whatever. Or, you know, or, oh, your dad's a tattoo artist. Oh, mm. we know his kind. Yeah. He's a drug addict, you know. Yeah. He's, you know, probably been in prison and, right. you know, which, I mean, it's, it's, it's funny, but 
I mean, if it's a criteria, right? There is a, there there is a stereotype. I don't I don't I I think you know when it comes to kids, man. I think there's things that we probably you know we'd probably be surprised at the things they they're proud of us for. Yeah, and then we'd probably be surprised at the things like they they could probably hold over our head a little uh, bit, bro, right? You know, yeah, dude, and it, and it's like. You know the kids, bro. That it's it's crazy. You know, I I've learned that just trying to keep your word with them, yeah, is, is the main they'll, thing. They'll, they'll keep you accountable. Oh yeah. Oh, dad, you said this. Oh, you said this. You said this, and I'm like, dang, man, these damn kids. You know. <laughs> but yeah, I've I've kept uh, I've kept everything from them. And the other day, I was in the car with my son, and uh, I was trying to tell him something, and. Uh, it, it 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 went back to like a population that's incarcerated, right? And then I I try to beat around the bush on it. He's like, Dad, why do you act like you didn't go to jail? You know, and I didn't go to jail. Mom already <laughs> told us, and I'm like, Mom told you? And he's like, Yeah, Mom told us. And I'm thinking like, Oh, dude, and here I am. So now, okay, so now trip on this, right? Here's the scenario. My kids know that I went to prison, and here I am for years. Acting like I didn't, right? That's crazy, dude. Right? And that that oh man, I was all I, I you went start believing your own lie. <laughs> yeah, dude, I was all pissed. You know, I'm not thinking to my to myself like, dude, here I am. You know, trying to trying to be this this certain way, a certain father, because I don't want my kids to to fall in 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 a path that I fell. You know what I mean? Because oh man, I mean, my kids are cool. They're they're good kids, man. They just get on my nerves sometimes, but. Who doesn't, right? Who doesn't no, get on no. each other's? Yeah, compared but, to, compared to the when you were a kid, they're probably really good kids. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> nah. Yeah, you know what? They are good kids, man. They're they're good kids. Uh, they're naive, I think, to certain to an extent. Obviously, I, I mean, we you know we me and my wife talk about that. We 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 always talk about like would our kids be able to survive in the neighborhoods that we grew up in, only uh, because of of. Knowing what's up, right? Well, yeah. Like, like, like the little games, the little tricks people people try to play, play on you, and and knowing what's like. I I would say no. I I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. I wish they, you know, they they kind of know things. I try to tell them, like you know, like think this way. I think if you put them in that, uh, let's say you 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 pick up a child and you go put them in the hood with a bunch of fools, um, that person's gonna feel they need to fit in. Right, uh, depending how strong his will is or her will is, they're gonna feel that need to fit in with everybody else. Right, and that feeling is what makes bad decisions, you know. And uh, other kids that already grew up there, they already like me. Like we all know, growing up, all right, heroin's a no-no drug, right? Like, okay, that's the, you know, you're. You know, yeah, you're gone. Yeah, you're, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you ain't coming back. That's it. Yeah, you're done. You know what I mean? And and, and more power to all the people who have. You know what I mean? I'm not saying you can't, but um, yeah, that was that was like the no no growing up. Okay, you can try everything else, just you can't try that. You know, but now you bring a kid that's naive and doesn't understand that value or that thought amongst the kids growing up who've seen the dope fiends on the corners and. You know, heroin addicts passed out. Had family members. Yeah, and yeah. and so then they they don't understand that. You know what I mean? And uh, it, it's 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 tough, man. It's it's really tough. I think that you know, I'm I'm glad I was I I grew up in the city. I grew up, man. It 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 made me who it's brought me here, right to this moment. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, and and. Uh, you know, it's it's taken my kids to where they're at. You know what I mean? All all the all the good and all the bad. I mean, that's that's the that's the whole the whole thing behind three foot radius. You know, like you have that radius around you. No matter where you are in the world, you carry it on your back, on your shoulders, uh, your morals, your beliefs, everything that's in that's with you. You know what I mean? And and you can't hide from it. Well, you can, but then you're you're just being fake. You know what I mean? We are who we are. You know what I mean? And and I I think that that might have been one of the things I did was like try to hide all that from my kids. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, but, I think I think in the era of uh, you know, like we said, social media and bragging, you know, trying to get likes, people share are over indulged, not over indulged. What's the word? In other words, they 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 say too much. Oh, bro, right? And it, and and you're thinking like. What are your kids going to say? Dude, and, they, and people yeah. don't care about that. They just care about, like, well, how many likes did I get? And my kids know all this about me. Or they don't think about, you know, if they have little, little ones. Like, the things I'm doing now, one day they can probably they can see, they can see this. Yeah. So my, that's what I'm saying. Like, my kids are old. They're, luckily, they're older, you know. And, um, like, at work, we talk about, like, hey, let's do a video. Let's do this. Let's do that. And the only thing that comes in my head is, what are my kids going to think? You know, what are my kids going to think of me, you know, like trying to do something too hard? You know what I mean? Like, and, and but first of all, that's not me. You know what I mean? We can't. I don't know. That's, that's the hardest. That's good. That that's it's your a first real hard thought, decision. You your know first I mean? thought, like what, how am I, what, what's the impression? Not the impression I'm going to have on random strangers that follow yeah. me, but the impression that my kids are going to have on me. What are they going to, you know? Yeah, dad, look at dad doing cartwheels for a tat. <laughs> <laughs> get out of here dude. i can't you know it's 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 but see that goes back to where we were raised right right you know where okay oh man it's that's a funny scenario like let's say i'm in the i'm with the homies and we're all just chilling and here comes one of the homies you know and he's dressed like a clown you know well you know what's gonna happen that that dude's gonna get told he looks like a damn clown Right. And, hey, bro, you better go home and change if you want to kick it out here with us. You're not going to be out here looking like that, bro. I'm sorry. You better <laughs> take those skinny jeans or whatever. Not no disrespect to the skinny jean era. but Oh, we can disrespect some you know. of them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh, they're disrespecting you know? us. Yeah, worry, bro. No. <laughs> hey, bro, I remember I used to roll up, and I, I used to, I've always had long hair, you know. And they'd be like, hey, what's up with the long hair? And it'd be like, you know. But everybody at that time, everybody was bald. bald. So it was a different thing, you know, but it had always catch, you know. I think that, that that gave us tough skin, right? Yeah. Because it was like, you were going to hear it. You already yeah, know. Yeah, but you're going to hear it. Nowadays, no one, you're not allowed. Yeah. Feelings you know, get in the way. Bro. Can't clown no more. Yeah. You know, you know. you're making fun of me. It's harassment. You Stay should see camp. some people at the yeah. shop, Ryan. They walk in there and then we start messing around and start clowning. Oh, yeah. I, when I took camp there that one day, I was like, "Look, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna start clowning in here. You gotta be cool." It gets, yeah, it gets. Uh, I got a friend. He tells his son too, "Don't say nothing. Look, when you go in there, just don't say nothing <laughs> and don't laugh. <laughs> Everything's a joke. You know, you say something uh, wrong, it's gonna you gonna, gonna come back and bite you." Yeah, then he's oh man, it's 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 just a good time, man. It's a good time. I, I, I always have a good time when I go there. I, I might compromise my my Christian beliefs uh, once in a while. <laughs> you guys be, I think you guys be going, you guys be going in some type. I'm like, man, I, I I gotta I gotta close my ears. I'll, I'll see you guys later. Yeah, every, everybody, man, it's funny because you get all walks of life in there. You know, you get yeah. We'll tattoo a cop, and then he's getting tattooed over here. And then you got some guy who's growing weed over there. Yeah. You know, and then you got some guy who's probably got some cops and robbers. Yeah, and they're all right there. And the funny part is that, you know, you start talking and clowning, and everybody has things in common. I, I, I love you know? that about the barber shop. I love that about the tattoo shop. Like, that's the way it's supposed to be. Right? Yeah, that's it, the way it should it, be. You know, you interact. Maybe you don't agree on everything. I mean, I, I go over there. Nobody's a Christian in that shop. Everybody has respect. We play around, talk. I don't have a problem. If this guy doesn't agree with me, he doesn't agree with me. Cool, man. Share share my story. You share your story. to you later. Yeah. And I think, you know, we, we were talking about politics a little while ago. I think that's the problem. That's the problem we have in this country now. You can't you can't go against a narrative. Because uh, then you're, 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 you're wrong. You know what I mean? You can't. You know, you have to fall in line yeah. behind, behind this. You know, you can't speak nothing other than this. And I think people, uh, you know, you can't come to the table and talk about it. Hey, yeah. this is what I believe, you know. It's like they're creating a majority by knocking a minority. Or so creating a majority like, by fear. That, yeah. Being canceled and, or something. Yeah, stupid. you know, oh, so, so now you're not even, you're not even that no more. It's you know, crazy. so it's, you're either, you, and you don't want to be by yourself. You know, so some people be faking in, faking the funk and doing all that, man. Yeah, but if 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 if, you know, if the country was one giant tattoo shop, it'd be great. 
You know what? It, it's it's funny because my wife used to tell, tell me, how, how, how come you talk to everybody? You know? And I'd be like, I don't know. Like, I'll go to the store, liquor store, start conversations, Costco, you know, whoever's right there. Oh, man, you know, and talk to the dude, talk to the lady, the bag person, whatever. It's cool, huh? Yeah, dude. I'm going to die one day, bro. Yeah. You know, we're gonna, I'm going to die and we're gonna just be there all quiet, all amargado about God, who knows what. Like Those are know, the best I'm, conversations, I'm too. Yeah, sometimes. Or you the best laughs. It, you, At least the best laughs. I get, I get good laughs. Somebody. Yeah, I get good laughs, man. I'm out there laughing my ass off all the time. The part you know? I love is when you talk to somebody, you know, uh, and then, like, you don't even know who they are, right? And you just start chopping up and you start creating a little back and forth, whatever. <laughs> then you realize, like, oh, this is... This, he knows somebody, or he is somebody, right? Oh, yeah. and, you know, and then you're like, "Oh, that's cool, man!" And it, it, that's when it's like really genuine, like yeah. you can tell. Yeah, and it, coming and it, together. And some people like that, man. Some people like, uh, like some of those people, they like being down to earth for at least a little bit. Yeah, you know, like uh, it's funny. Me and Calm, we were in uh, up north, so we got to play at. Uh, we every time we go up there, we try to get in at Pebble Beach, right? So big dogs. Nah, I mean big hey, bro, dogs. Pebble Beach. That's the that's the best place so far. That's it's awesome. And uh we got paired up with this this guy and his wife, right? So we get there and they're like, "Hey, do you know who you're who you're playing with?" And we're like, "Nah." And I'm thinking like, "Yeah, I'm playing with this <laughs> sucker right here, you know?" <laughs> and they're like, "No, you're playing with Oscar." And I'm like, the dude's white, right? Yeah. And I'm like thinking like, dude, we're Mexican, bro. You know how many Oscars we know? Right. You know, I got like seven on my phone, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, yeah? All right. What Oscar? And he's like, De La Hoya, right? So we're like, oh, no way. He's like, yeah. So I remember we went, hey, you know who you're playing with? You know who you're playing with? Right? Finally, I got tired. And I told this dude. Hey, bro. He's like, do you know who you're playing with? I go, does he know who he's playing with, bro? <laughs> huh? With me and calm, you know, and then so whatever. Long story short, as we're playing, we met him, cool guy. Um, his wife comes up to us and she's like, or his girlfriend, he's like, dude, you guys are actually some of the best people we've played with. You guys aren't all up on like on his sack or or whatever. Hey, get a picture of this and that. Right. We just played, we actually were clowning. Almost the whole way through. Just being just being who you are. Yeah, and he was, you know, we're laughing, and uh, you could tell that they like being more more down to earth, you know what I mean, instead of everybody up, up, up on them, bro. But yeah, I think, it's a I trip. Think, I think you recognize right away that, right, when you start talking to somebody, you start getting to know them, you realize, like, okay, this, this person's being real. Like, yeah. I, I can feel that every time I talk to, to certain people. I'm like, okay, I like this dude. Sometimes you talk to people, and it's just like... Like you could tell right away. Hey, that's hard when you're tattooing. Well, we, well when you get a tattoo, you got to, yeah, I mean, I'm doing my job, but you know, you're just right there, like, you know, like, all right. Yeah. You know, you just, just, let's try to get through this tattoo. Yeah. You don't click with everybody. It's, it's hard to click with everybody. No, yeah. You, you know, know. there's sometimes it's, it's a good time. Oh, yeah. Most of the time it is, you know, it, it's. Yeah, this is let's 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 talk let's, <laughs> let, let's get into tattooing oh, real quick. Man. So you 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 learn how to tattoo in jail? Is that true? Um so my Sally was a tattooer, right? And uh when I when I was there it was oh, you uh, want to call it college since your kids when I was in listening. uh also one eight trip out. One time I was tattooing <laughs> this 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 uh a homie of mine, right? I was already out. And I was at the barbershop, so my friend, I, I used to tattoo him. Well, I used to fuck him up, better said. He's like, hey, come to my house. My dad's friend and his kids, they want a tattoo, right? So I get there. Yeah, whoop de woo And then he's like, oh, he's a sheriff or CD, some some sheriff or whatever, right? And I'm like, all right, cool. So the dude's like, hey, where'd you learn a tattoo? You know, And I'm like, oh, you know, upstate. And he's like, oh, yeah, where? And I'm like, upstate. And then he's like, oh, where? Uh, you know. CDC. Oh, uh, you know what? We're just gonna leave it at that. He tells me like, like straight up, like we're just gonna leave it at that, huh? Or, uh, we don't want to talk about that. And he just walks away, and I was like, all right, whatever. You know, I tattooed him, got paid, left. But, um, but anyways, yeah, uh, I, uh, it was uh, in the nineties, and um, there's a neighborhood that had a green light, right? So they had just came off of that, so 
Lucky me, one of them is my celly. So I get moved from one cell to another, and they put me in with uh, some dude named uh, Beto, you know. Good dude, man. Uh, became my good friend. You know, he's from Maravilla, from Oyo. And um, I would draw in the cell. Did for, you, for, were, were you were you into art already? Yeah, I've been okay. I've been I've I've been drawing since I was a kid. Okay, painting, whatever. You know, I always liked art classes, all that stuff. And um, so I would draw in there for the first two weeks. We didn't really talk because of that whole issue, you know, Southside of Maravilla, all that, whatever, right? And um, so I would draw, and and that's what kind of opened up our 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 us talking to each other and um he's like oh you know how to draw huh and i'd be like oh little you know i was drawing some from for some dude named Wee. he's from pomona and uh he's he's like oh like oh you're good you know oh and this and that and i'm like you know this motherfucker <laughs> you know whatever you know and i'm just right there so i'd go out to yard and you know we'd both go out to yard but we didn't really associate on the yard but that's my celly. So him being my celly, like that's, you go to sleep in the same cell as somebody. So you got to trust this dude, you know, and he's got to trust you. So on the yard, I'd, I'd roll up on him and I'd be like, what's up, fool? And we'd be talking, be right there with a couple of his homies. And he'd always say, hey, your homies are going to get mad, fool, for if you're over here talking to us. You better hurry up and go over there. And, hey, give a <laughs> shit. So I'd sit down and talk to him. Long story short, I came in one day and he's sitting at a, at a, on a bench and he's drawing. So I crept up from behind. I see that he's drawing. And I'm like, oh, this motherfucker, you know? And I'm like, hey, you know how to draw, huh? And he just looks at me like surprised, like, like, yeah. I said, you never told me. You never asked. He told me. And I'm like, what a, <laughs> you know, this freaking dirtbag, you know? But he'd done a lot of time already. You know, this is my first time upstate. And, uh. So we start talking. He starts telling me he does tattoos and this and that, you know. I'm a barber, bro, at this time. I, I ain't thinking about doing tats. I've had a few tattoos, but um, so whatever. He starts explaining stuff, and I, I, I was real curious. So he told me exactly, describe how to make a tattoo machine, what to do, how to do this, how to do that. Um, He wasn't tattooing because of, you know, there's just... He didn't want to step on toes, and a lot of people who had animosity towards him and his people were going to start asking him for tattoos. So he didn't want to be tattooing nobody, so he he didn't do it. So when I got out, I built a machine, Just went at it. That was like my second day out. You so know? he taught you everything you needed to know. Yeah. You get out, and I, is that already in your mind, like, this is what I'm going to do? You know what? I, I don't know, but I wanted to get blasted, you know, and I was like, you know, I was one of those that I want to get blasted. How, how old are you right now uh, during that time? What year was this? 96. So two, two years. I was like 20. 20. So you're 20 young. 21, something and, like that. And, and I was 21, I think. So you're thinking you, you, you're already going to do a career change from barber to tattoo artist? Nah, I just figured, or you, you know mess what? Around? Nah, yeah, I figured, you know what? I'm, I was, I'm not going to pay nobody. If I can do it myself, so that was that was the whole goal at first. I'm gonna blast do a, yourself. Yeah, I'm gonna blast myself. So I started with my legs, and it, oh man, it hurt so bad, bro. And we're talking about homemade gun, homemade machine. I, I went to Hobby uh, Pegasus, bought a little motor, and, and you know I made a bad one from Pegasus. Yeah, the little, the little remote control, the place. RC cars. Yeah, because everybody used to get a Walkman, so I figured, you know what, I'm gonna get like a souped up motor from <laughs> Pegasus. You know, it was fourteen dollars. <laughs> And uh, I built it, dude, and I started started messing with my thing. I tattooed my brother. My brother was the first person I tattooed. You know, I did little, little stick figures on him. He had a dragon that he got in, in Hollywood when he was at UCLA. And um, so he's like, oh, what should I do, man? And I put little stick figures, and uh, it was like ropes, and they have arrows and bows. and like, like well, you, your, brother just, your brother just let you go for it. He didn't care. You know, it was like hieroglyphic stuff, like something you see in a cave <laughs> out in the in the desert, you know. And uh, it's funny because he studied anthropology, so he was cool with it. He didn't care, you know, a little dragon. He even put a dragon in his hand, a little stick figure in his hand. And uh, But long story short, so then, uh, you know, I was still cutting hair. I was uh, doing drugs. 
and I I try to trying to fish people at the barbershop. Oh, you're doing tats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So all my homies were like, fuck that. This was, he doesn't know how, you know, and they, they knew I didn't know how to tat. So everybody would bring me somebody from like their job from Chino, you know, neighboring cities. And um, sure enough, right there. The bloodbath or what? It was bad. <laughs> it was bad. Bro. You know what's bare you know, hands? Oh, bare hands. A, a sock in a in a little bucket of water. Oof. And uh, dirty sock, bro. No, no, I was supposedly clean. <laughs> you know, I mean, it had been bleached. It was washed. Oh man, dude. And then, you know what's funny about that <sighs> is that that you even to this day, you if you say you're a tattoo artist, there you'll always find somebody. That will let you tat- tattoo them. Yeah. Right? It's like a haircut. It's crazy. If like somebody's going to get a haircut, right? Somebody's going to get a haircut. for yeah. you know, I mean, If you're offering for free, well, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. people will take you up oh, and offer the, all day. The, if it's free, it's for me line? <laughs> That's a long line. <laughs> you know? But, uh, but yeah, so then, uh, you know, little by little, I kept tattooing, kept tattooing. But uh, at the same time... Are you, are, you, are you under anybody? Or are you just learning on your own? It's just you go? me. I'm just learning. That's I crazy. used to walk into shops and ask, and people treated me really bad. I remember one time I was at uh, with a homie, and uh, we were supposed to tattoo out of his pad, right? And at this house, it's a bunch of homies. Like, it's just a, it was a good, it was a good house, but not a good house. A good you know house. what I mean? Yeah. So, anyways, they wanted me to tattoo, and they're like, "Hey, let's go to this shop, man. We'll see if they'll sell me some needles, right?" So, like, we go. And then I'm like, hey, man, uh, you guys don't have no needles for sale? Now I understand, right? So they're like, nah, we we don't sell supplies. All right, cool. And as I'm walking, some guy is in the back. Here, you can have this one. And he's just used and this and that, you know. So whatever. I go outside. So the homie's like, what's up? What happened? And I told him. Let's go back in there. We'll take all their sh- You know what I mean? And I'm like, no, no, no. Let's just go, bro. It's cool. I'll, go, I'll do it next week or whatever, you know? And, uh, but, man, I destroyed so much skin. And then the worst part was that at that time, it, it was I was leading myself into a, more of an addiction at that time. I didn't have kids. You know, this was still like 98, 99. What's, have- what's your drug of choice? <laughs> or what was it? It was uh, I crack cocaine. Really? Yeah, man. I never knew that about you. Yeah, a lot of people don't. Uh, uh, yeah, that was my. So are you? My, that was my fave. Are you doing tats to so, to to help you get high? Or are you doing haircuts? Or both? I, so so I was doing uh, tattoos. I don't know, uh, just to do. You know what I mean? Just to see, and it, and then I was doing haircuts after a haircut. I'd have a tattoo, and then it'd be like, hey, fool, before we start, you got to take me to the spot, right? So it was like, it turned into like a ritual, mm. you know what I mean? And uh, subconsciously, it was uh, it was getting me deeper and deeper into this ritual that I was doing, you know what I mean? So the process was, uh, this is how I can do this better, you know what I mean? So we'd go and get like a 20, roll it up, smoke a fucking primo all the way back to the shop then i'd get there and then we'd just get ready and then i'd be like oh i need to you know i need to get my you know one more yeah i need to get you know what i mean activate the you know let it flow out supposedly right and then i smoke some more but dude that that thing is not like like at least with weed you get a little you know you feel like doing things that thing is not not you're stuck I remember doing a name, and it took me like four hours to do a name. Oof. And then I'd still take a break, and we'd go back to the spa and come back and, you know, get high again. And So you were you were a functioning addict, kind of. Yeah, I was, yeah. Are I you was, are you getting bad? Like, uh, like, we hear all the stories. You oh, I was really bad, bro. Stealing and. No, I didn't. You know what? I didn't steal because I had a, I was a barber. So you just get the no, money. No, but we were, we were spending, uh, I was spending like a hundred and. Like a hundred to hundred and fifty a day, on on my habit, and that was just almost me. And then still we had homies and stuff, you know what I mean. And then we'd all put in. Sometimes we'd buy like three hundred dollars worth of crack, and just be at the shop smoking and gambling and doing tats and and then it was like a haven because uh, 
we had homies from from different neighborhoods that would show up there you know so so we had homies from 12th street would roll up homies from pmr would roll up the south side we'd roll up and it was like everybody was there so it was cool you know what i mean then you had like other homies like my homies from 10 there it's not a neighborhood it's just 10 we call ourselves 10 streeters and uh but not really like that and they would all be there and then uh it was just dude you're talking about 20 people in a barbershop after hours and there was a liquor store next door just partying partying bro and this is all through your 20s pretty much this is all from 15 17 20 22 and then uh to until 2006 bro what changed um they closed down the barbershop. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, all that's all it took. Oh, barbershop uh, closed. Right? No more getting high. <laughs> nah, it wasn't just that. You know what? Uh, in two, I stopped. No, it was, uh, when did I say? 2003. 2003, I stopped doing drugs. Um, in 2000, my daughter was born, right? So I tried to stop. Um, but I, I couldn't, bro. I was, I was, I was bad, bro. Like bad. I mean, I'm talking like me and a homie trying to smoke like a quarter ounce, you know, mm. all night, like tripping, you know, it's crazy, bro. It's, it's really, it's just really, it's, uh, is, does that seem like a, another, a, a lot, another lifetime ago? Like you're like, man, just like, or is it a part of who, just who you are? Um, it's, it's. It goes back to the conversation we were having earlier. You know what I mean? The whole, I could have done more. Yeah. You know what I mean? Wasted time. Wasted time, bro. And it goes back to what I was saying with, with Casper. I mean, Casper was there. You know, that, that same homie, he would roll up to a, a gang of homies, you know? A but, gang but of homies. Dude. I think that I'm old, talking that, like, that, that, that block was like, a free zone so it was like you couldn't do nothing it was un- unsaid but it was like i mean you even had uh amc and uh the village they were, they'd go to that liquor store black gangs right yeah there's a, yeah and they were it wasn't like you'd see them but it was like a it was like a safe zone right there because so many families uh from different neighborhoods and people from the city have already walked through that barbershop that liquor store been there so long bro that it was like unsaid but neutral everybody zone. knew yeah it was a neutral zone man and it was, it was really cool um i mean it also destroyed a lot of people's lives man you know a lot of people but they were already being in that was just that where that circle met you know it's is obviously you made it out yeah, you know, but, but do you think back to those people and, and kind of go like, or are you think about your life and the, and you think about the people that didn't make it? Is it is it luck? No, you know what, man. I, you I know think, what I mean? Because I think sometimes, like, I, I look at people and like, why did he make it, but he didn't make it? I just made the right choice at the right time. Mm. That's what I think. Um, I I think that you know my my. Something had to happen. Something's got, like they say, something's got to give, right? Uh, my daughter was born. I tried. Um, you know, we were living in a room, renting back houses, uh, me and my wife. You know what I mean? It was like, dude, we were barely, we were living off 40 bucks, bro. Mm. You know, 40 bucks gets you a burger, a blockbuster movie, you know, and some diapers for tomorrow. And hopefully tomorrow I'll make another 40 bucks. You know what I mean? And uh, when my son was born in 2003, he uh, he really struggled at birth. And uh, he almost died. And uh, he was meconium, which uh, for people who don't know what meconium is, is it's, the, it's his own shit that he swallowed. 
mm. and it, it, it collapsed his lungs. So he had a real severe, it was really severe. And um, so they sedated him for, he was sedated for almost like 45 days. And um, he was born December 3rd. We spent Christmas there. Um, so I'd get up and go to work and uh, uh, make 20 bucks and be at the hospital all day, right? And uh, at the same time, I was on Prop 36. I'd been on Prop 36 for almost a year and a half already. What's that? It's a it's a program by the by the state, you know, court appointed <laughs> program, you know. <laughs> so I'd been busted for for paraphernalia, just, you know, just, just going through the motions. Yeah, just going through that that lifestyle at that time, you know. And uh, I ended up doing. It's either you go to go back to jail or you. Do a drug class, you program, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm, sign me up. You yeah, know, right. I can still get high and do what I got to do. <laughs> sign me up. And, uh, you know, it was it was crazy, man. Uh, so so Judge Peters is, was the judge the running that thing. Thanks to him, man. He's a good dude. Judge Peters uh, in Pomona, Prop 36, man. Really good man. Really good man. Helped out a lot of people in that city. But uh, anyway, so my son's born. Uh, he's struggling. I'm still testing weekly. I got to do NAs. Uh, I get my card signed, you know, sick ass forgery, you know. <laughs> and uh, so I'm I'm doing that. My son's born. He's not making it. And uh, the doctor's telling us to take a, a a class for dealing with the death of your kid, mm. you know. And uh, my wife's like, maybe we should do this. And I told her, no, I'm not doing that, man. The minute I say yeah is the minute my son's going to die. No, I, I can't. I'm not doing it. I'm not going to go talk to somebody. You know, my son's going to make it. And uh, we were there day in and day out. My son was on Norcoron, fentanyl, dopamine, and volume just to sedate him. Right? Now now look at the fentanyl. Yeah. Bro, this was in, in 2003, a child, a little infant on and they're using fentanyl just so you can stay there. Uh, Norcoron's a drug that's so strong, bro, that if your skin stays on a flat surface, surface, the blood will seep out. Ooh. Yeah, so he has a scar on the back of his head where that happened, where he won't grow hair no more. Right? So one day I'm standing there, and I'm just sitting there, and I'm like thinking, like, what are you fighting for, bro? You know, I remember telling, I, I, you know, and I prayed to God, and I was like, man, God, like, you know, like, what, like, what are you fighting for? You know, I'm I, here you are fighting for something that I'm throwing away completely. Mm. You know what I mean? And uh, I tested dirty that week, and uh, Jesse, he was at uh, Tri-City right here in Pomona at the time. He was uh, uh, my, my, one of my counselors. Uh, thanks to him too, man. Cause you know what? He gave me a chance that, that day. And, uh, he's like, look, man, I know what you're going through. You tested dirty. You know, you're dirty. And he's like, uh, next, next week, if you're dirty, I'm taking you in, bro. Yeah. 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 That's cool, man. You know, whatever. I didn't care. And, uh, you know, my son was done. He got out of the hospital in uh, mid to late January of uh, of 2004. And in that February, I got high like two more times, and I said, that's it. Cold turkey. Yeah, from one day to another, bro. Man, people say that's hard. It's a lie. <laughs> I think it's a lie. Yeah. I mean, I'm, 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 I did a lot of steps to, to, I mean, you were in me. the process, but you were you, you just decided that's it. That's it, man. But God gave me my son. Man. You know. Yeah, I wasn't gonna play with it. You know what I mean? Like you gave him to me. Dude, you could take him from me. You know, like you could take him from me, dude. I'm not I'm cool. And that was uh, it. Yeah, that was it. How what do you think it is? Well like there's just like some people don't do that. They have kids and and they, and they can see their kids' face and and they want to, but they they just can't. I mean, the drug just overpowers. 
I, I could see it, man. Like, I, could, I really get it. You know what I mean? Like, the, the average person doesn't get it. Me. The, 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 the non-user or the person. Sometimes it's because they've feel never it. been there. Bro. Yeah, sometimes you can feel it if you're a family member or something. But if you're not that actual person, it's hard to I, understand. I had a, a, a lady counsel. Dude, I did that. That course, that Prop 36 was six months, right? It took me two and a half years to finish, bro. <laughs> right? Uh, like I said, Peter's gave me a lot of chances. Uh, I was in a, in, a, in, a, in a meeting one time, and most of the people in there were young. The lady, the counselor, she had a past drug addiction, and she's talking about how she entered her drug addiction later on in her years. You know what I mean? And when I entered it, it was young. So we were doing recreational she did it because of problems. So I think that that rabbit hole is harder to leave than than when you're, you're doing it recreational. It just gets out of hand. It's a thin line, though, right? It, yeah, yeah, it is a thin line. And I also think it's just the way you're living. You know what I mean? If, if you're living bad, it shows. I mean, where you the way you carry yourself the way you do things and this and that. that's why everybody that goes to prison bro comes out and they looking legit for two three weeks four <laughs> weeks five weeks six weeks they looking good you know what i mean they were forced to live they're, right exactly and they're not forced to live right by the system well, yeah you know you're forced to live right by the homies you yeah. gotta do it you know what i mean we're we're we all reflect on each other you know what i mean and i think uh in in our societies in our cultures uh, uh we don't we don't hold ourselves accountable for that no more you know what i mean right like it's real easy to see somebody all tore up and we what do we do we look the other way you know what i mean yeah i mean we're not all here to let's save everybody right you know i got my own problems you know i got my own kids i'm i'm keeping them from from a destructive path you know what i mean and right and so but yeah, dude, it, it's so your it's, son saved your life. Yeah, that's he crazy, did, bro. He's, he, yeah, I've told him, I, I've told him all the time, dude, you saved my life, and uh, it's it's a trip. But I also, you know, I got to pat myself on my on the back too, though. That's another thing. You know, we walk around and and no one pats us on the back. Not that that's what we're looking for in life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But like, especially men, especially men, man. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I grew up without my dad from the age of 14, 15 on to, I see my dad once a year, if that. You know what I mean? You know, I don't, I don't even think my dad's ever said, hey, man, I'm proud of you. You know what I mean? And I've had conversations with him. I, I, he sleeps at my house when he comes down here. You know, nobody else wants him in, in <laughs> at their pad. You know, my sister's like, oh, shit, my dad's here. <laughs> but, I mean, everybody has their own relationships and right. own reasons to be whichever way they want to be with other people. Um, I don't hold nothing against anybody. You know, I'm just going to do me. You know, that's my dad. Was he the best dad? Um, I don't know. I'm not doing too bad. So, yeah, he was a pretty good dad. You know what I mean? There's values and there's morals that I'm going to take with me to – Till the day I die That he taught me Same with my mom They taught me You know what I mean But there's also Bad things that You know I've seen That you can learn from Bro I remember being Five years old And my dad was in the barbershop With his buddies Drinking and partying And we'd get home I don't know I'd always tell my dad Dad I wanna go home I wanna Yeah we'll go home You want something from the liquor store And then all his homies Here we'll give you a dollar And get come up like five bucks We'll get that you know Fast forward you know, 10, 15 years later, I'm doing that, bro. It's crazy. Yeah, and, and, and it's crazy because I didn't see drugs. I seen alcohol, right? But now you fast forward, and it's me and my friends, and I see alcohol, but I'm seeing a lot of other stuff, right? Was I naive as a child and didn't see it? Because I, I guarantee you somebody was doing some coke or somebody was, I mean, that was the 80s, bro. You know, it's crazy how you could uh, despise something so much and then repeat it, dude. Right? And maybe not, not even consciously. Yeah, it's subconsciously, subconsciously and then you realize, like, the heck, yeah, dude, I'm I was, doing the same thing. I, I, yeah, 
Dude, me and my brother. Me and my brother, bro. Oh, my God. Dude. And then that's what happened to my brother. He woke up dead. And it's crazy to think that. How do you wake up dead? That was uh, 10 we've years had, ago. We've had plenty of talks about about this when your brother yeah. passed. Um, how did that really, I, I know it really affects you to this day. But how how does that motivate you to this day? Oh man, it uh, you know what, man i i I went down a really bad path when that happened. I didn't want to do nothing. I didn't want to work. I didn't want to. I was in bed wrong. I didn't. I didn't want to do nothing, man. I, I was. It just wasn't fair, you know, and. Uh, but I had a great relationship with my brother, man. I would not change one thing. You know, he taught me a lot of things. Uh, but it's just, it was, it was really, really hard for me. He taught, he's, he pushed me into art. He would always tell me, yeah, he bought me an airbrush. He always would push me into art. And, uh, you know, he's one of, he was like my biggest supporter in whatever I wanted to do. You know, and uh, yeah, that one that I was that's still is tough, bro. I see. You, I, I you, don't. You, I don't think it's it's. You know, it, it never, you know, it never goes away. Yeah, you, it I never mean, goes you know, away. We, we, you, you know, you, like you, you said, we've had this conversation, bro. You know, yeah. you you lost your dad, bro, and and you know what I mean. Uh, you know, like we both know they see us. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like they see us, bro. It's crazy because it's like. You, you you think about it, you you talk about it, and you see little things, and you remember stories about them. And I get to the point now where it's like, man, like sometimes I I I've told every story. No, you know? I, I sometimes I I've seen every picture, and yeah. and that that's when for me it gets it gets it gets hard because I'm like, I I think my sister posted a picture that I never saw, and I was like, whoa, that's cool. Like this is cool. And then uh, there was a video that he did with his homeboys talking about how they how they came out of the neighborhood and stuff. And I hadn't seen it in like 20 years. But it started floating around YouTube again. And I had two people like, I saw your dad on this video. That's and, bro, cool they, sent, they sent it to me. And uh, <clears throat> it made me sad because I hadn't heard his voice in 20. Yeah, since, I made it since, real again. Since 2001, right? And I'm listening and I'm looking at the video. And dude, I was uh, it, it it messed me up because I didn't recognize his voice. See, that's those, those are, yeah. I know, I know, I know what you mean. You start. I told I told my wife she was, "What's wrong? Is it weird?" And it's, it's weird seeing him in the video. You know, I I, I still see his face. So I could picture it and yeah. certain actions, whatever. But when I heard the voice, like I I, I kind of looked away from the TV for a minute, and I was just, and I didn't recognize it. Dude. Oh, that was, that was, that one was rough for me, man. All right, bad, bro. It's, that's how, I mean, was that 23 years? Yeah, t- yeah, 23 years. I mean, and they went in, they, and they passed this in a blink of an eye, bro. It does. It just went like that, man. You know? And, and it, it just, it, the tough part isn't so much, it's like the memories, the future memories, bro. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I already know, bro, like. It's not even you. You know, it's yeah. Is 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 your son, your daughter. Yeah. Now that's 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 what you focus on now. Bro, and not just that, like for for you to say like, man, I wanted him to 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 see what he is. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's like the that's the one that gets you, that's bro. That's rough. Yeah, bro, because everything else you could deal with, bro. But those those little things are the things that like you know what I mean, like the things you love the most. Yeah, death is uh, is crazy like that. It's uh, it's indescribable sometimes. Yeah, dude, I had this. I had a. Um, it's it's crazy, bro. It's it's really uh, there's a a guy I know, right, and, and he comes up to me, and he tells me. Is at a con- we're at a convention, and uh, they were next to us the whole time. And uh, he tells me, he's like, 
hey, can I talk to you? You know, and I was like, yeah, man, what's up? And I'm, I'm like grabbing stuff, you know, whatever. It's, the, it's Sunday. And uh, he says, you know, uh, you know, he's always with you. Yeah. And I, and I turn, I just look at him, bro. And I literally just start crying. And I tell him, what are you talking about, bro? You know, and I'm like crying and like, hey, what are you talking about, bro? And he's just like, you know what I'm talking about? You know? And I'm like, it's all your brother, man. He wants me to tell you that. Bro, it just, oh, man, it threw me in a, in a sick-ass loop, bro, right? And I'm looking at this dude, and I'm thinking, like, I mean, like, right? So he starts, we start talking, bro. This fool's, this dude is describing my brother, right? I mean, I get it. I posted him on social media and stuff like that, but he's telling me things, bro, that it just, he, like, how, how do you know this? It's crazy, you know. So for years, bro, and when I drive, my wife tells me go to the store, do run a little errand, I'll play certain songs, you know. Just, but nobody knows, bro. Yeah, like my wife don't know, you know. That's when I'm driving by myself, bro, and I, it's like, you know what, man? I'm, I need to get these tears out by myself. I'm right. just gonna sit here, think about my brother and crying, bump this jams, you know, and. uh Whatever, I get back to the house, and I'm just like, you know, my wife sees me. She's like, what's up? You all right? Yeah, yeah, I'm good, you know? She just, whatever, we, you know, continue our day. Right. And uh, he tells me, he knows you play you play those songs for him. That's crazy. Bro. Right? And I'm just like, dude, and he's, he's, oh, man. It's, it's just like the craziest thing, bro. And, uh. You know, dude, it's, it's a it's a trip, man. I see that he, you. He uh, tells me stuff like, "What what you? Every time that you think that that's your loved one in a situ, whatever situation you're at, and you see something that reminds you, he says he's telling me he's all oh, that's him, bro. That's him. Crazy. The other day, I I I couldn't tell my mom." How do you look at your mom in the face, bro, every day when you when you go see her and knowing that the lifestyle that you guys lived is is a uh, is why she's hurting so much. You know what I mean? You you like I caused I helped cause I contributed to that that pain that my mom goes through. You know, every day. And uh and it, it's crazy. So I couldn't tell my mom, man. I I just I, I didn't have it in me, bro. To, to tell my mom about that, right? So I told my sister, right? So I told Myrna and my we and her were crying, we're on the phone, whatever, right? And then uh, she's like telling me, here we are looking for a sign, looking for something to let us know something, right? And we're still not, we're still not happy with it, you know? Like, what, what, like, what do you want? What do I want? I want be right here to tell me himself you know what i mean is that gonna make it finally all right it was never gonna be all right bro no you know? it's just it's just never is i don't i don't care if you know whatever it's just it's just not you know i'm brutally honest with people with that and, and i don't mean it in a bad way it's because i care for them and to tell them oh it's gonna get better yeah that's a, yeah it's, right it, it's gonna hurt less but it's never gonna go away yeah that's, that's what i tell people i tell them uh you know, I tell people the same way. I go, I go, I even, I've even told people, you want it to hurt more. Hmm. You don't want it to hurt less. You know? Yeah, because it feels like it's deeper, right? That well, you're yeah, still bro. connected. I, I don't want that pain to go away because if that pain goes away, bro, I'm, I'm losing it. You know? I don't ever want to, man. I'm, I'm okay. You know, I'll, I'll live with that pain, bro, for till I die. You know what I mean? And it's cool. I'm okay. I'm, yeah. o- I'm okay going through it. You yeah. know what I mean? If if like if that's, you know, I'm not a religious person. Not you. You already know. You know how I am. But if that's God's will for me to be in that path, and that's what I got to do, then that's what I got to do, man. You know, and that's why I couldn't. I can't tell my mom sometimes. You know, what I mean? but it's funny because he tells me. 
So my mom, my sister told my mom, right, whatever. So this dude sends me a text and he says, hey, man, tell your mom that it's him. So she doesn't freak out. Right. Yeah. And I'm thinking, what the hell? What's what's going on over there that that I got to tell my mom this? You know what I mean? But, uh, you know, uh, that conversations and those conversations with with my friend he's my friend. And um, I don't know if it's 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 weird, bro. It's 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 uh, it changed the way I see things and I and I and I feel about certain things, um, because you you know the the bad part is is in pain like that you want to believe, you know, you want to believe, right? But the one thing that did catch me was, like he told me, he's like, he walks in a beautiful place, and he walks good, right? So my brother used to limp. So I didn't want to be like, hey, what do you mean? Is he he's not limping no more, or like what? You know what I mean? And I'm just like, ah, oh, dude, I, I just let, leave certain things alone, and and it's like, ah, oh, bro, it's 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 that that one. Bro, yeah. for years I couldn't I couldn't get I didn't want to I'm telling you I I I I my work went down my motivation in life went down to be a dad to be a husband to be you know to be me bro went down I was I was grouchy you know what I mean just grouchy trying to shake it not able to shake it not the best you know husband not the best father you know probably not the best employee you know, but yeah, death is a. Uh, it's a, it's it's probably the hardest thing. Uh, I think death and sickness. You know, being somebody being sick. You know, or is uh, the hardest thing to understand. And 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 we've talked about. I know you're not religious. You you do a lot of religious tattoos though, which it's is cra- crazy, right? Yeah, which is. I crazy. wanted to do like demons and devil when I was like, I'm going to do some sick ass crazy <laughs> demonic <laughs> shit. You know, and I'm like, hell yeah, and then. It's 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 the weirdest thing because now when as I was tattooing and 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 I got into where I'm at and and in that path, I call myself yeah Jesus and Virgin Marys and and all that angels and heaven and all this stuff and yeah. I mean you did you did my Jesus Mexicans you know? are funny huh we're, we're real funny people yeah I mean we're we're you know the, God's a part of our culture it's part of my culture man for sure I mean being a Christian. Um, I think, uh, you know, just sharing with you and talking to you and, and, uh, uh, during the times I've gotten tattoos from you and, uh, I think that's what it's all about. Sometimes we don't, you know, sometimes people always trip out because I, I, I'll share like, uh, I'll share like a story and I think the, the, I think, I guess the best thing about it is when you, when you sit down, you get a tattoo, sit down at the barber chair, sometimes you don't have to. Tell people, you know, hey, Jesus loves you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 you yeah. Know, but what I'm saying is, like, sometimes you just tell them about your life. That's it, man. And the life that you're living. And I think that people kind of go, okay, like, like, like this guy's different. And you know what? That's I think that's and, all we can do, right? Yeah, you, you, just, you just make a connection uh, and have a lot of good friends. You know, you and Ralph and ne- not necessarily Christians, but understand... I would hope understand a little bit better about Christianity from our conversations or our, Hey, you know, reach out for prayer, you know, Hey Dave, pray for, can you pray for me or my kid or whatever? Or what do you think about this? Or what do you think about that? You know, well, that's so, you know, well, I mean, bro, how many texts have you gotten from me when I'm like, Hey dude, <laughs> Hey, what do you think about, you know, Hey dude, Hey, you know right. what I mean? But, I mean, but the, the the we we talked about the gateway, right? So it's just, so I like to leave the gate open for Jesus, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and just so you know, I can. I think too many times, like like people will will like we talked about stereotypes too, right? Where they'll just be like, "Nah, I can't, I can't go over there and say, hey, what's up?" Or I can't go over there and, and try to talk to these guys or share with them or just be their friend sometimes, right? But I think a lot of times that that little leaving that door open for people to, hey, ask a question, ask and, for prayer, something. It, but you got to remember, bro. A, a lot of times, uh, 
it goes back to like our culture, right? Not a lot of us, a lot of us are first generation here, second generation, right? So, um, we've, we don't have the progression in this country like other cultures that have been here six, seven, eight generations, right? Um, the looking, looking for some advice and stuff like that. It, it's kind of hard, you know what I mean? And dad's always working. If there's a dad in the household, he's always at work. That communication's kind of uh, not really there. You know what I mean? Like, one thing I try to do is tell my kids, like, I tell my kids all the time, like, hey, what's up, man? Hey, what's up? What's going on? Uh, you know, they don't even want to talk to me. <laughs> you know, I mean, everybody goes through that, right? Oh, yeah. And then everybody goes through that. 20 years later, oh, you never talked to me, Dad, when I was young. Like, what are you talking <laughs> about, dude? I just told you to give me a hug, and you don't want to give me a hug, right? Look at all these texts I said. Yeah, you. But, but, I mean, even, like, like, as an older person, you know, you have to have your good friends that you can actually have these good conversations with and and be subjective and be open-minded to uh what works for you in your life right you know what i mean and what might what hasn't been working in my life you know what i mean right and and be like well fuck look dave's it looks like Dave's, you know, this is cool and, you know what I mean? And and what's he doing and what's he doing? It's like the same thing with anything, bro. Well, like with, with, with me, with uh, like you and Ralph. Yeah. I ask questions about business. Well, how do you do this? Or what do you do with this? Like, yeah. and, and, and then, I mean, that's, that's what it's all about. It's crazy because when Norm, Norm, rest in peace, Norm, I used to, every time it was like <laughs> some like Jewish shit. <laughs> Right, I'll send him a text. Hey, fool! I heard you guys do this and this, right? And then he's like, "Oh, you know, he'll send me his answer." But you know, I don't know, man. Sometimes I'm messing around. Sometimes I'm, I, I really want that info or that right. It's the know, knowledge. Yeah, some knowledge, man. You know, I don't want to be talking to him out of my ass all the time. You know, so it, it's 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 funny though. I mean, I I, well, I I would think like there's a lot of people that reach out to us because the culture of family. Of, of of get togethers of having fun i've had people like you guys do that yeah and they're they're different culture they might be a little white right and they're, <laughs> and, and, and they're like well what do you guys do how come it looks like you guys are having fun like you know oh, we're, we're making tamales it's 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 you know christmas yeah. time and this is what we do and we play this and we, we have these games and they're like oh really like that's that's cool man and they're like <laughs> totally different yeah. But I think we could all learn from each other, and I think that's that's the that's the key. Oh well, yeah, you you we hope so. You know what I mean? And uh, it's it's crazy. Life's life's a trip, man. Life's life's take some crazy spins, man. You know, that like you said, death, addictions, staying straight. You yeah, know what I mean, yeah, staying on the path, bro. Like staying on the path is once you're on the path, it's pretty easy. You know, it's pretty easy to stay on the path. Would you say that you're a better father? A, an improvement of of from your father. Um, and this is and this is not a knock against your dad. We should always well, constantly yeah, improve, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I hope so. You know, I, I know I am. I think I am. But you know what? There's. Uh, I don't know. I hope my my kids can uh, vouch for me in their future. You know what I mean? That's the only way that we'll know. Right. Right. My, the path might, that my kids walk is gonna just it's gonna decide or say if I was a good dad. You know, or is that a, a is that's a weird belief though? Because, yeah, because we each I, have our own road. Because they have their own decisions to make. Yeah. Right? You know, I can only I can only help and tell them as much as I know, bro. Education wise, I'm not I didn't go to college, bro. You know, I'm not I'm not the smartest person in the world. I'm not a dummy. But I think I think going back to making sure like we're improving somehow. Like I think we can take you can take all the negative stuff about your father, right? I can take all the negative stuff about my dad and, and, and I can say, Well that's you know, you know, that's why I'm this way or that's why I'm not like that, or that's why I suck. Yeah. <laughs> but then I I can take it and I can go, okay, let me improve upon those little things that bothered me with my dad and not do that with my kids. 
And I think, uh, and I tell my kids the same thing, bro. I tell them, whatever you don't like <laughs> about me right now, then you'd be better for your kids. Yeah. I mean, my kids, you know what my kids tell me? We're not going to have kids. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, you guys, dude, I, ah. Uh, yeah. My kids, they're awesome. They're just awesome. They're awesome kids, man. They piss me off, though, but they're awesome. Hey, let's let's they're, let's they're good kids, man. Let's switch gears here. Sh- shout out to your brother Angel, man. Thank you. Shout yeah, out to him. I know. I know. You you've had the barber chair. Nobody can sit in it at your tattoo shop in honor of him. And yeah, that- my friend sits on it all the damn time. <laughs> Benji, that fool comes in and he just sits his ass right there. There's even a but little sign he, right there. Yeah, no, but he he, you know, he knew my brother. Yeah, he knew my brother really good. Like, you know. It's funny. It's 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 a trip, and uh, you know that he was a he was a barbershop member, you know of the social club, you know <laughs> Benji. So uh, you know all the guys that that uh, that were from that time, all my homies, everybody, you know, I wouldn't if they could sit on that chair. They'll I, I don't because they're not doing it not knowing right. They know? do not respect. Yeah, they're sitting there out of respect. You know what I mean? They, they, it, it's their, uh, their memory too. You know of the barbershop days. You know, I mean, bro, crazy. Hey, times. dude, ah, oh, it was bad. It was bad, Dave. But you made it. Yeah. Let let, let, it. let let's switch gears. You go on. You 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 get to a great shop. Lowrider tattoo. Low rider tattoo. That's where I got most of my tattoos at. Yeah. Right? And I got there by luck. You know that? How did that happen? It was uh so I was at the indoor swap meet because some dude Hoppo got me in there, right? And Pomona at the Pomona Indoor. Uh so he gets me in there. There's this dude named Tommy that's there. He ends up working at Lowrider. Lowrider has three shops at the time. Uh so it's Jose's shop his dad's shop, and Jose's compadre, Emmanuel, right? So he's working with Jose's dad. He has a fallout with some fool, so then they send him to the compadre's shop, right? So now he's got to fill that spot that he left. So he hits me up, and he's like, hey, fool, there's a shop out here. They need a guy. You want to come out here and see what's up? Talk to them. All right, cool. Boom, there I go, right? So I roll up. And I'm talking to Jose's compadre, which is Manuel, right? So I get there, whoop de woo, and it's him and his cousin, some big ass fool. And I'm like, look at these. This, that fool look like a thug, like straight, you know, little homie ass fool, right? So I'm walking there, and I'm like, oh shit, right? So he, they said, hey, what's up, man? Whoop de woo. Hey, what's up, man? My name's AB. And uh, what'd you say? He said like that to me, right? I said, my name's A.B. That's your name? I was like, yeah, that's my name, A.B. And then uh, he looks at his cousin. His cousin's name is Geronimo, Jerry. And he looks at Jerry, and Jerry just looks at him, right? Jerry's, like, standing up against the wall, one leg up, clicking hard, trying to look <laughs> hard as a shit, right? And I'm like, the fuck, what's going on here, bro? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I'm just here looking for a job. So then, all right, all, you know, dude, let's see where you see my work. All right, you're hired. All right, you know, so whatever. Long story short, turns out their neighborhood is Alley Boys, so they're called AB, right? So that's why they were like AB, you know? (laughs) So long story short, that's the only reason he hired me, bro, because of my name. That's it. That's that's Yeah, if you were to ask him, he'll tell you straight up, right? So me and him, cousin, so I was supposed to go to the other shop. I was, that's what they were hiring me for. But since my name's AB, they're going to keep me there. So I ended up staying there. And uh, uh, me and Jerry, uh, he was just at my shop. Jerry's a good dude, man. Both of them, Manuel too, man. Manuel's a good dude. Both good dudes, man. I owe them a lot. You know, they opened the doors for me and allowed me to walk into their shop. And, like, do. uh, they allowed me to do me, man. You know, they had a lot of trust in me and and allowed me to, to work. I met C there. From A Town Tattoos, he opened up A Town Tattoos. Um, 
Rob from Ventura Tattoos. Him and C were really good friends. I met them. I met Jose through that avenue. Uh, June Clown. And, uh, bro, crazy times, man. Sleeps. Oh, yeah, Sleeps. That's, that's a funny story, man. Sleeps was... Uh, so, when I met Sleeps... My boss was at it. He opened up a print place, right? So he opens up this print place, and uh, I'm at work. So I get a phone call, and he's like, hey, some fool from L.A. is going to roll up right now. He's like, don't hire him, you know? Don't hire him. He says, he's like, don't hire him. And I'm like, what's up? He's like, look, dude, some dude was here. I told him I had a shop. Go down there and see what's up. And he's like, at the time, it was in, like, cracking. You know what I mean? Yeah, we had the lowrider name, but people were going in there and saying, hey, is Jose here? And we'd refer them to the other shop, all right? So long story short, I'm like, all right, whatever, Ray, you know? So this dude rolls up. What's up? My name's David Big Sleeps. They call me Big Sleeps, you know? whoop de woo So I'm like, hey, what's up, man? So I'm looking through his portfolio, and I'm thinking like, damn, the homie said don't hire this dude, right? So we're chopping it up. He seems cool, man. So I told him, look, bro, um, I'm going to hire you. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like, all right. I go, look, bro, I don't know what happened, but, you know, between me and you, I uh, just got a call not to hire you. So then Sleep's looking at me. He's actually looking at me like, what's what the? Once again, brutally honest. Yeah, he's like, what the hell's going Like, what's going on, bro? And I told him, look, dude. You do lettering, we don't have no one that does lettering. So uh, we can use you. You know what I mean? Like, and this this uh, this company has a good name, bro, and it's going. You know, it, it, at the time, Lowrider was like. Top notch. Yeah, bro. I mean, it still is, bro. Jose, fucking beast, bro. That fool's a beast, man. But uh, so whatever, I meet, I meet uh, Sleeps. And I told Sleeps, I go, look, man, just use the name. I'm going to introduce you to people. We're going to, you know, do what we got to do. And uh, we could really use you. You do you do lettering. No one here does lettering, bro. You know, and I, I was viewing it as if this was my shop, you know. Yeah. If this yeah. was my shop, I would want somebody that does lettering. You it would know? be asset to the shop. Yeah, bro. And look at, yeah. you know, I took him on a couple of conventions, introduced him to the to couple people. I'm introduced him to Bug Hunts. And rest in peace, Bug. Another good ass dude. Hey, you know, fuck. That's a that was a beast, dog. Yeah, Bug was a beast. You know, I remember Bugs like, if you want the two thousand dollar tat, I'll give it to you. If you want a fifty dollar tat, I'll give it to you. No, look like fifty dollars. No, but I remember, man. That's a good dude, man. That fool always treated us very well, bro. When we were up in, uh, when we'd go to uh, Texas. I always treat us real well, man. Good, good, good human being, man. And uh, so, anyways, so you, so, so you, you know a lot of people in the industry, yeah. And you, and you, you've grown in the industry, yeah. Started your own shop, yeah. I've now, been, uh, yeah, ten years now. We just hit ten years last month. We're gonna do a party, bro. But you know, you're a cheapskate. A little bit. No, you're not a. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, you're not a cheapskate. Every time I, I've been to your I, shop, there's always good food there, always, and I I, I seem to always show up when there's like. That's why we you can't the do whole the, spread there. That's why we couldn't do a party, bro. We've been eating it all all year long. <laughs> you know, uh, it's funny. All of my apprentices, everybody, we, we always tell them they all get their weighing like, hundred and sixty pounds. When they're done with their apprenticeship, they're weighing like two ten. Right. You know, it's like man, it's all bad, but. uh yeah, you know, I've, I've, uh, I've, I've tried. That's you know, another thing goes back to the name of the shop, um, Three Foot Radius. You know, we were, we started traveling. Uh, me sleeps, and one of my apprentices, Edgar, Edgar Aguirre, um, good ass dude, another good, good human being, and um, we traveled, dude. We went everywhere across the seas. Uh, we were places we weren't supposed to be. You know, uh, I wasn't supposed to be there, you know, and um, I got to see things you only see, we see in our phone now, you know what I mean? Uh, 
beautiful things, man. And um, things, my things, my brother. It's funny because my brother, he he used to read, and he would always tell us like, "Oh man, you read and you're there," you know. It's crazy. Yeah, dude, it's so insane, bro. Because I got to see those things, you know, a lot of them, and and uh, it's it's just awesome, bro. And I know I was excited, bro, when uh, me and the family went to Rome. Dope, huh? Yes. So I think uh, I couldn't help but think like, like you guys been here multiple times and been all over, and then the excitement from like you and sleeps, like. Man, bro, that was it's dope. Huh? You, yeah. you go here, did you go there? And and and, and one of the tattoos, right, yeah. that you gave me, you right know, there I the, go and I and and I walk right up on it, and I'm like, this is this is that yeah. statue right there. And so the connection between that was, uh, it was pretty amazing because I I know I used to see your guys' videos and your posts and your pictures, and I was like, man, look at that, look at that, look at that, and then to be able to say, oh look. I went there too, went man. There. Hey, dude, that's funny because everyone says, like, people who want to travel, I always be like, dude, go to Rome. I don't care. Just go to Rome. Rome and maybe Florence that I've been to. You know what I mean? But Rome, bro, uh, it's just, it's, I don't it's, know. It's, it's amazing. Yeah, I walked in the Vatican, bro, and it was one of those things where if you don't believe in God, you're gonna walk out of there believing. It's a, it's it just a, it's, it just it's a trip. That feeling, bro. Yeah. That as soon, dude, I cried as soon as I walked in through that place. I, I I I I teared up, bro. Yeah, I was like, dude, this is just. It was so overwhelming. I tell people that like that that uh, that asked me about it. I said, for me as a Christian, right? I'm looking at it through those eyes, right? And I'm thinking. This is the Roman Empire. This is uh, this is where they, to be honest, they persecuted Christians. Yeah. This is where Peter, you know, now you have St. Peter's Basilica, you know, this is where Peter came to preach, you know. And then I get there, and the craziest story was this, you know, go to the Colosseum. And, of course, it's in your mind. Like, you know, they, they fed some Christians here to some lions, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's... it's hey, but that... Oh, go, it, go it, 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 not the whole time, but yeah, yeah, it's yeah. part of the history of. Oh yeah, that. that's you know, it's it's part of the history, right? So I, I'm I'm looking at that. But there was one particular story, bro, that was a trip. You know, of all the disciples, they all were martyrs. They all died, a brutal deaths, you know? <laughs> brutal deaths. Yeah, yeah. Crucified, was, they were nice. Cruci- crucified upside down, burned, yeah. all this stuff, right? Um, but the one story that tripped me out there is that I'm looking. And 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 you think there's one there's one disciple that didn't die brutally, and it was it was John. John got exiled to uh, to an island, right? And he died he died old age or whatever on yeah. on this island. But the story at the Colosseum that's a trip, bro, is that John goes there, and the the emperor whoever at the time for who what it was it was uh, I think it was Nero, right? Okay. The, one of the worst when it yeah. came to Christians. He brings John out and dips John in in this oil, burning oil. Oh no way! And John, this is this is not recorded in the Bible. Yeah, yeah this is yeah. recorded in, in some in, history books in, in, in you know in Rome. And that they dunked him, and then when he came up, nothing was wrong with him, <laughs> right? And that all the people in the stands were like. This this guy's God must be must be true, and <laughs> dunk, so dunk me. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. This this, this guy's God must be true. So yeah. they all they, a bunch of them got converted that day. <laughs> Obviously, right? You would be converted too. And so they so in, in retaliation they 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 sent they sent uh, uh, John off to exile. Like put this guy on an island and and, yeah. and leave him there. We don't want him nowhere near our people. Yeah, it's, it's but, all bad. But I was like, what? <laughs> and I put two to two together. And I was like, yeah. And I told my brother-in-law when this dude's telling us this story. And I go, it makes sense. And he goes, why? And I go, because John didn't die a brutal death. He got exiled. And then, yeah, we, so. and, and, and then it, it, that's what it says in the Bible. 
but it's, just all that history it's it's uh everything that's there all the art you know people it's, people it's get a crazy it, it's 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 um it's it's just so like i said overwhelming like constantine you know you come out of the vatican he's right there on the left well, if if you're walking out, he's on the left. If you're walking in, he's on the right. Right? He's, he's on a horse. Pushed for Christianity. Why? His mom. Really? Right? Yeah. So they were pagans, right? Yeah. They, they, it was pure pagans. Yeah. So look at this guy. He's going to give me a little Bible lesson here. Let's so go. The, so the mom was Christian, right? So because he loved the love of his mom, that's what he made. He made that change. You know, and then Rome kind of converted. Crazy, huh? Yeah. Crazy the power of one man. Yeah. You know, but then, uh, I mean, f- that's, that's, it's, it's, it's crazy. It, yeah. It, it's, it's just it, a lot it of stories. It's so deep, bro. It, it, that, that's such a deep, you know. There's a lot of stories there. There's so much history there. Um, bro, but to walk on those, to walk on the street where Caesar walked. Oh, yeah. Dude, you know what I mean? Yeah. All all that, and you're just walking around. You're seeing the ruins, bro. Uh, the col the Colosseum is eerie, right? Yeah, dude, that is so eerie, bro. Yeah. Oh man, the Vatican I, was a little eerie for, for for me, you know. I but I when I when I start seeing the art, when I start seeing the things, you know, and that's a, that's another thing about about the art, you know. People get on me about the, the religious art, you know. You got a big old Jesus painting, and you. And I said, you have to understand, like, to create a painting like like Car- Caravaggio, right? We 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 found, me and Camel we found like the, the church that had like three of them in in, in there. It's crazy. Went, and then we we you know we went to the Borghese uh, uh, Gallery, uh, the Borghese Museum, where they have like a whole room of all you know a bunch of his paintings, all you know, Jesus. Or, or it's it's David holding Goliath's head, and and then people's like, oh man, just it's just so religious, you know. And then they say it in a negative way, and I go, you have to understand, they didn't have pictures, you know. And you have to understand how much time, and and this is a masterpiece. Yeah, they're not painting a comic book. No, you know, <laughs> right? Imagine, hey, Car- look at the Caravaggio. They're doing the Sunday comics. For, for everybody out here, <laughs> right? It's it, it meant something to yeah. them. It was from the heart, you know. It, it it's and I, and I think like, to, but a lot to, of we're getting paid. You, mean, got, you know what I mean? Like, of course. Like like, uh, but I think, but I, but what, I, but I'm, but I'm kind of contributing that to is like is like tattoos. Yeah, they're 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 not just you know, when I have Jesus on my arm, you know, it's not just a. A, a, a religious thing for me it, it has a meaning oh do what do what do you, do you want to argue that he didn't look like that of course you can we can argue that <laughs> we can argue that all day you get that a, a million times a day right oh that's not jesus he was dark you know he, he's not jesus he was an arab he's not the, and i'm like it's not the ma- it's it's what it represents bro yeah because we had a uh you know those candles makes it a bit yeah. so we did one and uh so we have uh <laughs> a friend of ours he used to work there right and uh he said uh jesus was black right so we had a big old you know how that argue that's just the uh, one of those arguments right I, you know how you kill that real quick uh i said okay <laughs> <laughs> that's so, what i say i go does, does it matter the only thing that matters is what he did right so we got other people well he's mexican you know i've always thought he was mexican growing <laughs> up right and then it's it was funny. So then uh, it was bad. I shouldn't have done that. But we photoshopped uh, Samuel L. Jackson. I remember you did that. Like the Jesus, right? And we told him, hey, is that, does that look like him? He just looks at us like, oh, man. It was Jimmy, Jimmy Caves. He's a cool, cool dude, too. And uh, so we, we are having that conversation, but it was just a joke, right? So then... I would always tell him, like, oh, well, you know what, man? If you really, I, I, I just personally think if you want to break it down, I mean, you know, he would look more like Bin Laden, you know, he's in, a, that, in that in that uh, time, for, you know, what I mean? Middle, Middle Eastern, Northern uh, Northern uh, uh, Africa, a beard, yeah, long hair, you know, it's gonna be darker. Yeah, he I lives mean, in the sands I, out there. And, I, I get it. I don't have no problem with saying that. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean, like, I mean, like, like, 
He ain't okay. Mexican, bro. He don't look like El Buki. I mean, he, he looks might, like El Buki, but you know, <laughs> he, he, he might look about your your tone. Ah, uh, yeah, he probably got that like, hair a I mean, little bit, you know. But maybe not the nose, bro. Maybe not. <laughs> he was he was a, he was a he was a Jew. Yeah, you know, we know he was Jewish, but we know that they're you know Jewish people. You know, they look they look a, a lot different. Yeah, you know, and then times the change, bro. Yeah, you know. I remember one time my my history teacher told me that uh, he said, "Oh, you, all you guys have black in you." You know, <laughs> oh man, I was young and I was like, "What the?" F-? You know, I don't want to know how that joke yeah, would that go turned, over. That turned into a big old argument in <laughs> class, and it was like, I mean, dude, well, I'm what am I like, sixteen, seventeen, row hanging out, and it was just all bad, Mister Rashawn. Uh, you know, good man, that dude, good teacher, man, really good teacher, really cares. And uh, I remember he told me that, and I was like, I didn't have a really good answer for him. Actually, kind of rude now that you think about it. But you know, we we've you know all 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 cultures have crossed each other's lines already. You know what I mean? And you know, everything's everything now. Yeah, everybody's everybody. Yeah, it's, it's, it's it, a trip. I think it's uh, doesn't doesn't matter no more. You know what I mean? It's just it, it, the, the cultures have changed in the last fifty years. You would see a say a black and a, and a white girl, and you everybody would be like, "Whoa!" Now it's just that's a big deal. So I think everybody's crossed over. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Hey man, that's that's a, you know. But so yeah, you, so then we we were at uh, Low Rider. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then from there, I ended up at. Uh, you know, I was there uh, uh, six years. You know, travel won a lot of. We all won a lot of awards. We all traveled a lot. Um, it was a good time for tattooing. I think that that time for tattooing was really cool. It was, uh, you know, LA Inc. was happening. You know, Miami Inc. was happening at that time. Uh, tattooing blew up. Chicano tattooing, our style of tattooing, like. Blew up. Black and gray. Black and gray. Uh, you know, fine line, single needle, whatever you guys want to do, whatever everybody wants to label, whatever, you know, all these new labels and stuff. Um, you know. And that 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 whole that whole man. Man. That's that that's it's just it's crazy, bro. You know? If they do it in Italy, they do it in Russia, you know, and it's like, it's it's like, like, dude, you got guys coming from, from another country, trying to do seminars in Southern California, and then the seminar they're probably gonna do some Chicano stuff, right? Jap- right? Japanese dudes coming over. Oh, dude, no, this dude, they're they're from, from the UK, and it's like, like I get it. Living in poverty and living in hoods and ghettos, that's everywhere. You know what I mean? But just because we share that similarity, you don't share my culture. You you, you know? have a big problem with that, right? I have a very big problem with that. You know? It, it, because it goes back to, like, hey, you know what? Like, I, I wouldn't even show your pain, bro. You know, if you're uh, Italian, if you're you from the UK, if you're this, like like people from the UK, uh, want to get a hundred dollar rose on them, bro. The hundred dollar bill is less than your guys's money. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. saying? Why would you do that? Right. You know, get some of your money and make it a rose and and put it on you. That would that would be real for me. You know what I mean? That would mean that it's, it's real. Don't get me wrong. I've done... Hey, dude, I get paid to tat. You know what I'm saying? So, but at the at that time, I don't know, man. Like, like, do they know why they're doing the clown girl? Do you, do you, do you get upset at other artists that just don't care about the culture and just say, well, who cares? You're getting paid. Let's just do it. They want to do it. It don't matter. And, and, and you might have guys that laugh at you and go... Oh, you take it too seriously. I, I mean, 
you know, I take it serious because I know what it means. I know where it comes from. You know, I've sat there. I've sat in that cell. You know, I've sat in that cell with other homies that aren't getting out. You know, that are real. More realer than me. More realer than the next guy. They ain't getting out. You know, like we wear those white t-shirts because of homies like that. You know, we're able to walk out here and hold our head up and be proud of of that path we walk because of those homies. You know, those fools who put it on the line, who gave up their like like it's it's the the closest thing that I could put it to is be like people in war. You know? That dude gave up his life so the rest of these guys can continue living. You know, was the same thing. You know, that's outsider gave it up so we could still be out here. You, whatever we're doing. They're still slanging drugs, still gang banging, still low riding, still doing us. Whatever it is that we do, that's us. You know what I mean? Italians, you guys have your own culture. Glorify your own culture. People from the UK, glorify your own culture, man. That's dope. You know what I'm saying? Right. If you don't have a a, a 64 Impala <laughs> that you guys cruise in, you have like a, I don't know what, the, the little the little taxi cabs <laughs> put that shit on some d's a bike li- lift it yeah you know what i mean or whatever, whatever. a scooter yeah a little you know <laughs> vespas or whatever they're called bro whatever it is dude you know but but for you in your life that's what's right. real and that's what's going on bro. right you know what i'm saying like dude there's a dude out there who tattooed this dude and he put like some tattoos of a face and that face had a neighborhood on it from out here. Oh. So that dude is out there in Europe wearing a portrait of a guy that is from a gang out here. But what's he doing? He's repping. The, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, like dude, sense. it doesn't make sense, bro. Nah. Like, you're not even, it's not even making sense, bro, what you're doing and what you're getting all this stuff for, you know? And then it's, 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 uh, it's just, it's crazy, bro. Do they get down? Ah, oh, bro, my hat's off to the type of work that these dudes are doing. They're badass, bro. You know? They're they're really badass. But a lot of these countries pay for schooling. You know what I mean? They're, they have art degrees. Right. Free schooling. You know? Put all the homies in some free art classes. See what happens. You know? And, and and it's dope. It's awesome to see. I, I've met some really good people. I have some really good friends out there that, you know, they do it. You know what I mean? And uh, we have conversations about that. And and respectfully, they kind of understand. But at the same time, it, it, it's already so far ahead. Right. That is something that it just is. But does it irk me? Hell yeah, man. It irks me. You know? Come walk the streets in 1994, 1991, 1989. Wear a white T-shirt. Walk five blocks. See if by the time you're not halfway down, you're looking through 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 the through people's houses where you're gonna run. You know what I'm saying? Like that's how you. That's the mentality that was going on. If you're walking, if I'm gonna walk down to the store or something down the street with the homies or whatever. You're also watching to see which way we're going to have to run if somebody rolls up on you, blasting or hitting you up or whatever, or one of the homies is strapped. What, but what do you say to the dude that says right now, oh, you sound you sound like an old dude. I am an old, old dude. Old, bitter dude. You know what? Because I, 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 get, I get what you're saying, and I, and I hear myself, bro, because... And that's why I don't talk much, man. Like, you know, like, right like, now we're having... It, it, no, no, I get like it. Like, what I've said today, bro, I, I only have those conversations with... In like, private. Yeah, bro. You know, in private with a little bit of people. Uh, me and Sleeps have had this conversation. You know, me, Sleeps, a bunch of other homies, you know what I mean? And um, and it, it's, it's not... 
I mean, I'm not, I, I guess, yeah, maybe more mad, angry a little bit at the fact that, like, people don't have to respect no more. You know what I mean? And I'm already past the age where I'm going to go and try to check everybody. You know? And I think that's where I'm I'm more probably mad at myself that, like, I can't check nobody. I think in every... You know what I mean? In every profession, in every uh, skill, uh, even like, 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 like I do jiu-jitsu, right? You, you, you get the old school guys. They go, oh. Well, back in my day, you know what I mean. <laughs> you, 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 you know, like the great, the old school way was like dudes would come to the gym and challenge, like, yeah. hey, let's, and your coach would go, hey, you're about the same weight, you, cool. better, you, you know, go ahead, and that's how you would prove yourself. And now, you got you get guys that get a blue belt, you know, and 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 they do it online. <laughs> oh, you, yeah, you see what you I'm know, saying. So, so I get that. How do you earn the, your flag? You know what I'm saying? Th- Pretty much, things things are uh, things are different. You know, it's, it maybe, and, and I guess you're right. You, you we would you would feel like, well, I paid my dues, or even if you're in music, a band. Before you would have to what travel, yeah. get your name out on the road, play wherever you could. You didn't have social media that you can yeah. go and and post it. So I guess yeah, it it is a different time, and era, and it's it's it's. You came from an era where you had to you had, had to, to be it. that, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you had to be that, bro. Hey, dude, I remember I, I was in jail and uh and I did a drawing for some dude, right? And some other homies were like, "Hey, what's up? Who's what's that drawing for?" And I'm like, "Oh, it's for the homie over there, right? Oh, he's going to get that?" I don't know, you know. But he asked me to draw it for him. Get a tattoo. I don't know, man. Maybe you need to ask him, dog. You know, <laughs> like, so what happens? He we wanted to get it tatted, right? Oh, they fucking checked them real quick. You know, like they can't get that tatted. You haven't earned that yet. You know what I mean? I'm allowed to draw it, but I can't. You know what I mean? And that's the thing. It's like. And not that certain people are earned because we're way past that. You know what I'm saying? But I I think also the other thing is like. I think, for example, I got a perfect example. Apprentices. Right? You still still do the old school way of apprenticing. Oh, yeah. Right? You're going to come here. You're going to do whatever we tell you to do. Clean up. Set up. Draw all day. All day. Not going to touch a machine. Not gonna do no tattoos here. I better not see you doing no tattoos on nobody. When you earn your keep around here, we'll let you start a little bit. Yeah, once then you we, then we put you in the farm team. Yeah. Once you prove yourself that you belong here with us, and not even at the at a skill level, you know, once I know that you belong with this crew, okay. You know, I mean, that's just the right, that's, uh, that's something, you know, I think you don't just let anybody come kick it on the, on the block. No, I think it adds more value to what you're doing and what you're creating. Right. If there's a, if there's a fast track. Oh, there is. You're you're, kind of doing a disservice to, to what you created or what you're about or who you're part of. Right. I think if you, if you, if you're doing it, uh, you're doing a disservice to that, but you're doing a disservice to that person too, because they never learn the right way. Yeah, that you know what? My hats off to a lot of all my apprentices, bro. All my apprentices that made it through and are tattooing and are in the process right now. My hats off to them, bro, because it, it's uh, I don't make it easy. I don't make it super hard, but I don't make it easy. And these guys are like broke for the time. I mean, broke, bro. Uh, sometimes they're watching you eat, bro, and you're looking at them, and they, you know they're hungry, dog. And then you feel like, oh, what a dick, you know? Like, so then the next, oh, I've been uh, there. And then you buy them a burger. And I've been there. And then, you know, it, 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 dude. I've been there when you, when you've, uh, I couldn't you know, do it. When you have sent them places, uh, go do this, go do that, go get me this, go get me that, and I'm just like, I didn't understand. I used to think like, oh, this, this is, this is mean. 
but you have to know how how much that guy wants it. Exactly. You know, what's he willing to do for this? What's the value of of coming under somebody that already paid their dues twenty years? You know, and you, and you know what? Like, I, one thing that we don't do is uh, we don't humiliate each other. You know, like one time, a long time ago, a, a, a homie said, we make a homie, we don't break a homie. And that always stuck with me so hard, bro. Like, that's true, man. You know, we we have to build each other up, man. That's the only way. And that's the only way it stays strong, bro, because that guy's always going to remember. It's like anything. Uh, you don't ever remember. You. It's easy to remember bad things in life, you know? Like, the, you learn another language, what are the first things you learn? The bad words, you know? You talk to a white person, hey, pendejo, they taught me that word. Ain't nobody <laughs> taught you a good word, bro, you know? They didn't teach that dude nothing but the bad words, you know? And s- same with, with, you know, Mexicans. Fuck you. That's the first <laughs> word we learn, you know? Son of a, you know, and I'll, you know, whatever, right? So that that's that resonated with me uh, a lot. And it, and it makes a lot of sense, man, you know. And I think that uh, they, once they get into the craft and realize stuff and we start traveling and they, they, they know things and they start realizing who I am, it all starts clicking for them and then they, they, they appreciate it, you know. And, and hopefully they can pass that on one day, you know, because nobody's going to stay with me forever. You know, they're all going to leave one day. Even calm? Even calm. You know? Nah, I don't know. Calm. Calm's cool. I love calm. calm. <laughs> the great calm. guy. That fool. <laughs> Fucking calm. Calm's funny. I, re- I remember. Hey, what, I re- he I remember. got mad at me. I think he got mad at me the other day, but he says he's, he, that motherfucker, he won't admit it, bro. He will not admit to, like, he's he's uh, he's stubborn. That fool, he's Calm's, Guatemalan, bro. He, he's tuned you out. Oh yeah, he tunes me out big time all the time, bro. He's like, dude, you know. And I, I love Cobb because he was like, "You'll be going in," and he just keeps tattooing. He yeah, might he shake his head a little bit, but he just shines you on, does his thing. You know? I, 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 I'm not very proud to say what I'm about to say, but I cheated him the other day on purpose. So we're golfing, we're playing for like a dollar <laughs> a hole, right? And. uh so we had a rollover of six holes, right? So it was like a good little pot. So we tee off. It's a, it's a short par four, but it's like downhill and it boot le- it, it dog legs to the left a little. So whatever, he gets a good hit. I get a pretty, I get a good hit. I'm more to the right, and he's a little off to the left of the of the fairway. So his shot's a lot not better look than mine. Whatever, I'm a little, I'm a one twenty. He's one thirteen in. Uh, to the hole, puts he puts it on the green, bro. Right, I hit right before him, and I I hit, I'm on the fringe, so he puts his on the green, right. And I'm like, fuck, you know, I, I'm I'm a very competitive person, bro. Oh, really? You're not gonna win, bro. I don't give a <laughs> shit. Even if you win, bro, you're not gonna win. So then I'm like, shit, right. So I'm like, fuck, all right. So I I get a six, and I just you know hit it. Kind of like a putt, but it gets a little air and it rolls up. I'm like five, six feet. And uh, I two putt, right? So I'm five strokes. Like, fuck. I lost. So calm's right there, you know, two putts, pars. So I'm telling Picas, uh, another good friend of ours, and I told Picas, hey, I'm going to just say I parred it. So I watch it. So calm's like, I parred, you know. And then I told Gaspar, hey, Gas. I parred, bro. Calm's face was like, you know, he didn't want to say nothing, though. You know, I and I respect it, dude. He's not going to sit there and argue about a damn stroke, right? Because so it's a gentleman's game. Nah, because you know what, dude? Me and my other homie argue all the time, and it's annoying, dude. It's the worst thing you could do on a golf course, bro, is argue with somebody about a stroke, bro, you know, or where your ball landed. Like, that's it's petty. <laughs> It's petty as shit, right? So then we get to the next hole, and the homie's like, oh, it's going to carry over. And Calm's like, nah, I won that hole. How? I told him. I parted. Fool, you two-putted, he told me. Yeah, I two-putted. One, two, par. 
And I turned around because I couldn't hold. I couldn't. I couldn't hold it, bro. <laughs> you know, I just turned around. I'm like, whatever, right? And he's. You could just tell he's just like, like bothered, bro. You know. And it's funny because I always call him and I'll be like, hey, what's up? He didn't answer me. He didn't answer my call after. But so I call the next day. We talk. I said, hey, my bad, dog. You know, I just wanted to get under your skin and shit. Oh, it's cool. I still have the card. He told me. Ah, uh, yeah, dirt bag. You know what, man? That guy. He's uh. He's helped three for radius be what it is, man. You know, yeah. I I know that he's probably put up with a lot of stuff, and he doesn't. You know, he's he's a good dude, man. Yeah, he's a, he's a good dude, man. And he he's, you know, I'm I'm I'm, I've told my guys. Look, this is the first time I've I've, I've done this. You know, this is the first time I've had a business for ten years. This is the first time I've had a business for nine years and a half. This is the first time I've had four employees or four. I call them co-workers, bro. I don't like calling people employees. Uh, this is the first time I've had four co-workers and two apprentices, you know, and I have a wife and this and that. This is the first time I'm going through all this in life. So if you ever feel that I'm tripping, tell me. They say, hey, AB, you're tripping, dude. I've lost some, you know what I mean? I'm not a, like... You know what I mean? Like uh, sometimes I gotta ground myself, bro. You know, and and calm has put up with a lot of that, bro. For ten years, bro, he's put up with. You know, he's pretty much like, hey, you're the owner. You know, and and I respect him so much for that, bro. You know, because he's a very talented dude, man. Uh, very talented, that guy. One of the most talented people, one of the best uh, lettering guys in the in the game. Oh yeah, you know definitely. You know, and it's, hey man, we've been dude. up here two hours and twenty minutes. I know, it flies, bro. Flies. You know? we're gonna have to do part two one day. <laughs> Whenever, you know. I appreciate you coming out, man. Hell yeah, hey man, I appreciate you having me here, bro. You know, and uh, proud of you. Proud of you too, man. All the way from Pomona. Yo, you know how we do it. Made something. Yep. Created something. City with no pity. Nothing but the nitty gritty. Homeowner, business owner. Yeah. Has his own kennel. Headache owner. Headache owner. Fuck. Father. Fuck. Husband. Fuck. Yeah, dude. You just got to get a little bit more God in the mix and then we'll be good, bro. You know what, man? I, I know. Hey, you know what? I was, uh, I was talking to me and my wife. We were talking about, like, we're 30 years, man. You know, 30 years, bro. That's a long time. Yeah, dude. And I, I be, I don't know, man. Lately, it's been, it's been, it's been a trip. Lately, it's been a roller coaster, bro. You know, due to, uh, I think my, uh, I've overwhelmed myself with a lot of things, bro. Um, I'm coming out with a machine, uh, like three machines. And uh, just work. And like I was telling you, that little studio I'm trying to do, um, everything, bro, everything is just, and then the time, the way, the times are weird right now, bro. You know, stress, different, everything. But yeah, I think, I think uh, you know, something's got to give somewhere. Some things uh, have to change or, you know, you can't get, you you can't stay in that comfort, something's got to yeah. change, bro. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's true. Something's got to change to to create better. You know, no risks, no, no reward. Gonna, yeah, bro. And I think that's the that's the hardest part of comfort. Yeah, you know, no, no more risk. You don't take no more risk. Even in a relationship, you got to take a risk with your kids, with with whatever, man. You know, if we don't grow, that's it. We're done. That's it. You know? But I appreciate you having me here, dog. Heck yeah, man. You know. And we do one more thing on the show. It's called the Furious Five here. We have five Furious questions. All right. Quick answers. Ready? Yeah. Mr. A.B. Alvarez on the Street Gospel Furious Five. Question number one. What would you change... If you can go back in your life, 
one thing. Nothing. 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 You would you have still smoke crack? Yes. Get busted? Everything. Everything. No regrets. The only regret I have is Nah, you know what I don't, man. It's a good way to live. I can't. You can't. I wouldn't be me if I if I regretted life. I wouldn't be where I'm at right now. It's good. That's good. I, we'd be stuck back there, you know. Nope. And I, I've been there. I've been stuck. I'm cool. Good. Question number two: Who's your biggest influence? Uh, you know what? Not knowing it. Uh, I never realized it until until he was gone. My brother, Angel. Yeah, it's crazy. The the little things that you shared. Ah, uh, bro. The Eating how to hold a tortilla, how to uh, how to keep my tortilla from being stolen. You know, who'd have thought that? You have to watch out for your tortilla after you warm it up. You know, I did because my brother would eat it. You know, and uh, just all those every everything that I learned and and. Subconsciously learn from him, bro. It's crazy. Subconsciously, I think that's huge, right? The stuff that he probably didn't think that stuck. Yeah, but then it comes back later. Yeah. Like the little thing that you said, bro. That was that was that was powerful. What he told you, read and you're there. Yeah, bro. He would open. He would, we had an, a, a Britannic. Remember the Britannica? Yeah. They come to your house and something to you. Well, anyways, we had one, right? And it was a, a room. We lived in a room. Me and my brother and my sister. And uh, my sister too. She's a very big influence on my life, Myrna. And uh, you know what, my sister, both of my sisters, you my little sister, little shit ass. But um, <laughs> uh, my mom too. Um, they that book. He would he would always say, "Hey, grab me one." So it was us three in a room, right? Bunk bed and one bed. And he slept on the bed. Me and my sister. Anyways, grab me a book. So I'd grab him a book, open it, open it, pick a word. Give me the book. I'd give it to him. And he'd start reading from there, bro. Wow. Hey, bro, this dude had the... It was crazy with the stuff he... he He's giving you about. lessons. Yeah, bro. You, he, you, you were just thinking, that's oh, my brother. He's just doing his thing. And we would talk about things. And he would, he would share, like, bro, Hitler. He would talk about Hitler. He'd talk about World War II. Uh, he'd talk about the Roman Empire, Genghis Khan. All those things, bro. And that's what I'm saying. Like, now that I travel and I see these things, bro, King Arthur. He used to talk about King Arthur, the Round Table, the Crusades. All Crazy. that stuff, bro. Uh, Robotech, whatever, right? And now when I'm out places and I see, like, dude, he, he he had already seen all of it, bro. You know, Crazy. that was cool. That was it's really dope. cool. Yeah. It was really dope, bro. Question number three in the Street Gospel, Furious Five. I think you're a funny dude. Made me laugh a few times. Probably made me laugh at jokes I shouldn't be laughing at. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. AB, AB. Who's the funniest person you know? Oh, man. That I know personally? Yeah, yeah that makes you laugh. That, 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 that you sit down and you're like, oh, just busting up. My kids. Yeah. My daughter, I say that about my daughter. My daughter's like the, she's the funniest person I know, man. My kids. My kids, my my family, bro, my wife, you know, and then another person that that I can actually sit and we just laugh is my cousin Gilbert. I grew up with him, and he so he grew up in Southgate. But me and him, like, dude, we sit there and we laugh. My mom too. My mom, me and her just laugh. She's funny. She's my mom's funny. She's she's too much, man. Yeah, you. It, it's funny how you rub off on your kids. Yeah. My cousin Gil, though, it's funny. One time we were, we were eating cereal. We're little kids, right? We're just sitting there eating cereal. And then the box is like 12.5 servings or some shit, right? And we're like, look, that shit says 12.5. Dude, we both had six and a quarter <laughs> servings, bro. We're like, whoa, this is crazy. You know, we're like, dude, that shit's true. <laughs> uh, dude, yeah, that, but that's that's the type of, you know what I'm saying? Relationship, yeah, yeah. Yeah, bro. And my mom, man, my mom's funny, dude. She's she's funny, man. So that's where you get it from. Uh, probably, because my, my mom is funny. Yeah. She talks a lot of shit, too. Oh, okay. That's she's, definitely where you get it from, dude. Yeah, she's, she's good. Question number four, The Street Gospel, Furious Five. 
If you weren't tattooing and can pick any other career, what would it be? What would you have been? A barber. A barber. Yeah. Oh, I was a barber. Yeah. yeah. But if, let's say, either one was gone, I don't know, man. I'd be trying to build shit at home. <laughs> 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 so I think, you know, I, I it, it would have to be with something... Creating something Creating something Yeah, yeah. It, it would have to be like Maybe Like my hat's off To construction workers uh, You know f- Woodworkers All the uh, You know Metal All that dude You know I sit there at home And I'm trying to build something on YouTube And I'm right there Like dude and I know You know It's, it's my, my brother-in-law's good At all that stuff man Thank God Camo works Works with him Teaching him Showing him How, how, how to How to learn the trade because cool. uh, I'm not the greatest, man. I, I, I'm just, you know, I'm like you. I'll try. But for some reason, I don't have a knack for it. Yeah. You know what? It takes me a long time to do a project. Yeah, me too. Like a month. Yeah. You know? And then on YouTube, it looks like they do it in like 30 seconds. Yeah, bro. bro. It's like so easy. And then, and then you do this. Yeah. And then you do this. And you're just like, yeah, it doesn't work that way. It's, it's really cool. So I think that's what I would do. Maybe like, you know, a carpenter. That's dope. Like Jesus. A carpenter like Jesus. And a fisherman. <laughs> like Jesus. There you go. <laughs> right? Last question of the Street Gods with Furious Five. I know you like to eat, man. Oh. Uh, so unfortunately. Let's, let's say you had a last meal. What would it be? Whatever my mom wants to make. Ooh. Okay. That's that would be That would be the last meal. It doesn't matter. My mom. And it could be like the ghetto foods, man. Fidel. I don't give a shit. Fidel or tortilla. My mom, my mom <laughs> makes like, bro, papas with ham. Yeah. With onions and tomato in there. It's, bro. it's weird how they made it work back then, huh? Hey, you, I didn't know I was poor, bro. You know that? I didn't I didn't know we were poor. You, you know what's funny about that is is my dad would make, make well, my mom would make tacos, right? For my dad. And she, she, he would say, make it like my mom made them. And she would put, you know, the hamburger and put potatoes, little little yeah, yeah, chunks yeah. of potatoes in there, right? So I was like, man, yeah, yeah, these are. And he's like, we didn't we didn't make them like that because we it tasted to. better and it was better <laughs> and we wanted to, right? We made it like that because we didn't have enough meat. Yeah. So they would cut up the potatoes, throw them in there. <laughs> but they would they would make the the, the, make the greatest work. things out of nothing. nothing. Crazy. Bro, that's uh Yeah. My mom's tamales, bro. I'll fire. I'll put them up against anybody's tamales. I don't care. I'll bet money. <laughs> they're, they're just, man, that, and I don't know. Well, appreciate you coming out, man. Chapter seven. Where, where, where could people find I'll you, brother? Uh, they could find me in Upland, three foot radius there. tattoo. The I'm there too many days. Yes, yeah, my <laughs> wife. You know, but yeah, I'm there uh, every day except for Sundays and Wednesdays. Um, we're there, so you can call the shop or go on Instagram. Yeah, there you go, church days. Figure it out. Sundays and Wednesdays, bro. Uh, you know, three foot radius. Check out AB. Check out the whole the the whole team, man. Props yeah, to you, bro. Every, everybody there, man. Everybody, calm. Brian, Anthony, Robert, Nobert. Yeah, my, uh, my co-worker, Andres, goes to Brian all the time. All that comes back. Oh, Brian did this. Brian, Andres. Hey, Brian's... Brian's good. And my hey. other co-worker went to you. Ooh. Bravo. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, you should have seen yesterday. <laughs> this fool was... Man. Hey, you know what? What's that? Another thing is that, like, the, the numbing stuff that's coming out. Oh, yeah. Cheaters. Fuck, you gotta earn Cheers. Hey bro I think that's my My Like No one wants to earn Their stripes In whatever It is that they're trying to do Right You know If you want Like I even told my son Look man I don't care what you do in life Just be the best at it Yeah If you wanna shovel shit For a living Hey man I'm gonna be the best shit shoveler There is bro That's what I'm gonna try for whether I am or I'm not, it doesn't matter. But that's right. what I'm aiming for. But people don't. I don't. I don't know, man. A lot of people don't want to do that no more. It's crazy. Yeah, all that falling asleep Shortcuts. for tats. Got it. That shit's for the birds. 
Dude, that shit, I don't even know if people are like, you know? And then they're trying to do it, and uh, it's all... No one showed the heel process of it, you know? This is whack. Yeah, we, we'll, get, I that. Got to, we'll get that on part two. Yeah, I got too much to say about certain things, bro. It might not be good. <laughs> Shout out to AB, <laughs> man. Thanks for coming hey, out, bro. Thank you, bro. Appreciate, Appreciate you, it, man. man. Thanks for your time. That'll conclude this episode of the Street Gospel Podcast with AB Alvarez. Check him out. Three Foot Radius, man. City of Upland. We out. Peace.